YVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Ladies Football and gentlemen, welcome to your Fisher Catholic. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interface Video Productions High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker and down on the field, Marion Royster. Tonight we're at Fulton Field of Lancaster High School. It's actually the home field of the Fisher Catholic Irish. However, tonight they're the visiting team. They're being hosted by Fairfield Christian Academy Knights. Fairfield Christian comes in at 3-1, and one, Fisher Catholic at 1-3. and three. Tim, let's jump right into it, talk about these two teams. Like Both of them with very small rosters this year. Like How has that been for, for, for these coaches to adjust like to? Irish level yeah, the thing is, you've got to be concerned uh, about your depth in case of injury. Um, but with that being said, they have some Chester really good players. Let's talk about uh, the keys to the game, or the uh, tonight's pregame show. It's brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals, Carol and Carol. And Eric Winnington would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events in Lancaster. They're a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio area since 2003. They would love to help you plan your next event, weddings, special events, even corporate events, all with a personal touch. They can be reached at 740-689-6991. Talk about personnel for these two clubs. First of all, you got to talk about the home team, Fairfield Christian. You can't talk about them without talking about Danny Blair running the football out of the backfield. Very, very aggressive runner. Um, and also their quarterback, Gabe Welsh, has had a good good year so far. Yeah, Coach Pardon, you know, he had a lot of good things to say about his team. But as you said, Danny, he called him special. Yeah. He's just a junior, and he was averaging about 80 yards a game. But he's got six touchdowns, two of them receiving, and he's also got 25 tackles from his linebacker spot. And then the you other, throw Gabe Welsh in yeah. there. He's really impressed with how he's come along as a leader and a playmaker, and he extends plays for them. Let's go down to Marion right before we get to the kickoff. Marion, beautiful night for high school football. And uh, these two teams, I tell you, whenever they get together, you know, it's cliche, but you kind of throw the record out the Team window, don't you? Yeah, you really do, Jared. It's, it's a, a battle of, you know, which team wants it more and a lot of, again, not to overuse cliches, but it really does come down to that. You know, Fisher Catholic, I think, has a lot to build off of. They played really well. Um, the last couple of weeks on the offensive side of the ball has put some points on the board. Um, and, I, you know, again, I think they have some things to build on. They should go into this game with a little bit of confidence. It'll be nice to see what happens this evening. Tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is pr proud to be supporting high school football. They've been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. It will be the Knights kicking away to Fisher Catholic. Of course, Fisher Catholic, uh, as I mentioned, used to being uh, here as the home team and wearing their green jerseys, but they're the visiting team tonight on the scoreboard. Fairfield Christian is the home team. We'll get to talking about uh, personnel for Fisher Catholic after the kickoff. And we are underway. It's going to be a short kick. to be taken, fallen on by the up man, C.J. Robers, right about the 38-yard line. Shoot, let's talk about... The personnel for Fisher Catholic, of course, uh, we, we know the dynamic receiver that Hyde O'Reilly is, but this year they've gotten several more guys involved. Simon Messerly, they've gotten Peyton Owens, Jaden Morales, Bobby Bennett. I think they've been their best offensively when they've gotten all those guys the football. I think most teams are going to be like that. When you, when you can share the wealth, as they say, you're going to be stronger because you're tougher to defend. You know, and, uh, you know, Grant Kiefer now is a junior, and, you know, he's just got to keep progressing and getting yeah. better, Jared. Key for the quarterback, number 12, out of the shotgun. Looking downfield, fires a deep ball down to Hyde O'Reilly, and it's intercepted on the first play of the game from Fisher Catholic. Picked off over there on the far side. I, it, I tell you, Shu, it's going to be hard to see those numbers all night. They've got dark gray jerseys and dark blue numbers. So Rusty Hutchison with the pick on the first play of the game. Watch here on the replay. Just overthrows his receiver, Jared. Yep. Fisher Catholic has been their best when they're when they're working the middle of the field and when they're when they're throwing some short passes and they've gotten into some trouble with those deep balls like that one. 
So give uh, Fairfield Christian some credit. Rusty Hutchison came away with the pick on the first play from scrimmage. Out of the shotgun is Gabe Welsh with Danny Blair standing right to his right. But a flag on the play. Let's get to our keys to the game brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability since 1979. Owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty and each estimate. That's Mark North and North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Well, talk to Coach Timmis. He says, let's stop the run. Got to improve the run, but they got to really hurt him with their passing game. And talk to Coach Barton. He's really on top of it all. So he says, we must take away the big plays in their passing yeah. game. On first and five, we have another penalty. Boy, not a good start for either team. An interception on the first play. Two penalties on the next two plays. And we'll get the call from the official right here. There's no penalty for a face mask. No penalty for a face mask, is what I heard him say. Yeah, I'm glad they picked that one up, guys. It looked more like a horse collar than a face mask. I'm glad they were able to see that. Good corrected. You see our referee tonight is Jeremy James. The umpire is Jeff Gardner. The head linesman is Wyatt Hoffman. The line judge is Robert Schaefer. The back judge is Blakely Hollinger. And that's our crew of five for tonight. Welsh pitches it out to Blair. Blair's got all kinds of running room down the right side. And he might go. He's at the 20. Yeah. One man to beat. Touchdown, Fairfield Number Christian. Four, Untouched the down the right touchdown. side. Really good job by that right side opening up the hole, and there was no catch in Danny Blair. Well, and there was, there was no resistance over on the left side here, Jared. You'll see. Look at this. There's already seven people behind the play. Yep. You attempt the point after number two, Rusty Hutchinson. Tonight's replays are brought to you by Dagger Law. We've already seen several of those here early in this game tonight. Rusty Hutchison to kick the extra point. It'll be out of the hold, I believe, of Jimmy Schmitz. Kick is up, and it is good. So with 11.39 to play in the first quarter, Fairfield good. Christian SCA with seven. an early lead, 7-0. I'm going to go down to Marion. Marion, I don't know if you noticed, but on that first play from scrimmage from Fairfield Christian, they had three receivers over on this near side close to you. Two of them fell backwards onto the ground. What, what, is that just some kind of a trick play? What's going on there? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, if you want to call it a trick play, really it's just designed to just take the attention away uh, from what's going on on the other side of the play. So, you know, sometimes an astute defensive player will know if something's up that, that doesn't look right, you kind of smell a rat, yeah. and you want to be able to, you know, look to the other side of the field or look at what's going on either around you or behind you because chances are that's just put in front of, in front of you as a rouge. Yeah. So for Fairfield Christian, a great start for them. They get a pick on the first play defensively. And then on their third play from scrimmage, Danny Blair rips off, what was it, about 60 yards? Over 60. Over 60 yeah, yards for a touchdown run. I forgot to look. I think it was 62 or 3 yards. Hey, with that score, Jared, let's, let's uh, say thanks to the first-half scoreboard sponsor, Buckeye Automotive Family, the Buckeye Honda, Nissan, and Toyota dealerships would like to wish all of our local athletes Best of luck this season. Learn more at BuckeyeCars.com. It'll be Fairfield Christian to kick it off. Another short one, and it almost was recovered by Fairfield Christian. Gavin Stewart over there on the far side to try to recover it. The ball goes out of bounds. That'll be a penalty on Fairfield Christian. It's illegal procedure. Do they spot it at the spot where it went out of bounds or not? I believe they do. Two weeks ago, uh, Portsmouth Notre Dame was here, and every single kickoff, they onside kicked it, no matter what the score was, no matter what the situation. And from what I'm told, they've even done that in games where they're – it doesn't matter if they're losing, winning. It, that's just their philosophy. Well, that's, and that's unique. Kind of seems like right now that's what Fairfield Christian's going to do as well. Well, it's much different than what we saw last week with Langster's J.D. Thomas. J.D. was yeah. booting him five yards in. He's good. He's a, he's a weapon. Kick yeah. catch interference. Kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. Fisher Cap. So it was kick catch interference as Stewart was about to catch the football. He was hit. will actually take over from the so that's a penalty that will move Fisher Catholic up in really good field position at the 44-yard line. Well, the first two possessions were quick, just different results. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I'll say, since you won't, Jared, that's a heads-up job by Stewart there, <laughs> knowing that he could catch the ball because it hadn't hit the ground yet. He still has full rights and privileges to that ball, yeah. and anybody that runs into him accordingly would get a penalty. So it gives Fisher Catholic good field position, first and ten, and a handoff to Morales, and right away he is wrapped up in the back. Morales on the carry. Leading the charge. I think it was 60 rally. Second in. Yeah. It was Asher Rally for Fairfield Christian. Yeah, we'll see watch right here. here. Again, there's wow, just, just no push off that line. No, there's no resistance to the defenders. And, you know, Coach Pardon talked about they're going to be really aggressive with their yeah. front eight. He likes their defensive backfield. He feels comfortable. They can defend. He's going to he's gonna do a lot of things to put pressure on the Irish. So second down and 15 for Fisher Catholic. Hand off to Ethan O'Reilly, the freshman for the Irish. And, again, a loss on the play. He's going to lose one on that one back to the 50. Ethan O'Reilly on the carry. Fisher Catholic just has struggled all year for, with a, a running game, and, and part of that is, is youth inexperience. They, they lost their uh, their number one running back who transferred to New Lexington for his senior year. He's uh, involved in welding, wanted to take some welding classes, and he lives in New Lex, so he transferred out, and Fairfield or Fisher Catholic really having a hard time finding a replacement. Kiefer back to pass on third and long. We'll tuck it in, and he's wrapped up. A good job defensively by Fairfield Christian on the sack was Keeper sack on the play by number, number six, four, sir, that's Asher Danny Blair. Blair. Fourth and long. Again, here you can see the pressure from the FCA defense. Just nowhere to go. Yeah. Owens back to punt for Fisher Catholic. Right now in two possessions for Fisher Catholic, they've got a turnover and negative 10 yards. Owens, rugby style punt, gets it away, downfield, and it will be downed at the 26 yard line. Punt is down by number 10, James Morales. First and 10. Good to see Morales, you hear his name called. Good to see him playing tonight. He was uh, injured last week at Martins Ferry. Actually caught a really nice pass over the middle and as he was going down, he got he got hit, I believe, a knee into the back of his head, and they actually took him out on a stretcher. Um, thankfully, he was okay. Just a precautionary move. Uh, you know, that, that, that's one of the things I, I tell you. Trainers do a really good job nowadays. There, there are certain key words they're listening for, and when he mentioned that he had some pain in his neck, they're like, "We're getting you checked out." But it's good to see him yep. back tonight. Very wise. Good job defensively here by the Irish. Number 77, Nick Harris, the freshman, getting in there to wrap him up for a loss. As you can see, FCA going to try and get a little tempo here. No huddle. Second and 13. Harris, this is his first start tonight on defense. He's a six foot three, 254-pound freshman, and he just busted right through the offensive line. So second down and 13 for Fairfield Christian. Welsh again out of the shotgun. Blair to his right. It'll be a handoff to the receiver coming around. That's Rusty Hutchison. Hutchison trying to get to the corner. Breaks a couple of tackles still on his feet. And will finally be wrapped up and brought down right about the 32-yard line. About a seven-yard gain on that play. Hampshire on the stop for the Irish. Third and five. You know, guys, I think these defensive backs for Fisher are going to really be challenged tonight. You know, not only is it the speed of the receivers that are coming at them from Fairfield Christian, but also their aggressiveness that they have blocking on the perimeter. Yep. They're going to have a real challenge to get off blocks and make plays on the perimeter. Third down and four for the Knights. Here's Blair. Blair hit, but he gets the, the yardage he needed Danny for the first the down. Number 18, Bobby Bennett. Tell you what, somebody laid a big block over there on the far side. Saw a body go flying. Yeah, when you see people fly in the air and land on their backside, <laughs> that's not a good thing no. if you're on the defensive end. It's a good hard run by Danny Blair. Some good blocking by the Knights to spring him forward for that first down. Same play, opposite side this time. On the carry is T.J. Blair, and T.J. will have about six or seven yards on the play, on the carry. Just trying to get on the perimeter on both sides. 
You know, Blair on the carry tackle by 22, Sam Tenza. This Fairfield Christian Second team is four. one that comes in three and one. They've, uh, they've been off to a really good start, and last week had an exciting game. This is their second league game, the first one for Fisher Catholic. Last week they won on a field goal with one second left against Grove City Christian. I'll tell you a little bit about how that, uh, that came about here. Second down and short for the Knights. Blair is wrapped up in the backfield. Simon Messerly breaks through and gets him out of that linebacker Eddie spot. Blair, you know Simon's a story in himself. That that he had to sit the last yeah. two Six. years due to injury. Yep. And he's back having a really good season. He that, really is. I, I'm glad for players. You know, as I always say, they don't go out to sit or be injured. They come to play. Right. That's, that's good for Simon. Third down at five, just under seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Knights on top, 7-0. Welsh looking to pass, has plenty of time, lops one down there, and it's out of the hands. Good job defensively by Bobby Bennett out there. The intended receiver, I believe, was Jimmy Schmitz. And that'll force the Knights to punt. Yeah, I see a replay here. Did a good job of making a play on the ball. That's real good play. Yeah, nice job. Number four, Nanny Blair. So Blair will punt it. Peyton Owens stands at his 25-yard line to receive the punt. End over end kick. Nice kick by Blair, angling it toward the right side, the far sideline, and a good job. Rolls out of bounds inside the 15. So shoot, tell you got to talk to Coach Pardon about that game yeah. last week. That had to have been an exciting one. He had, to, he, 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 you know, this is where he, we talk about Gabe Welsh a little bit, and he said, "Listen, we're driving down line. in the last few seconds," and he said, "We are, we're out of timeouts, and we had grounded the ball intentionally. We had a play left. We get to the one, we're inside, really close." And he, we, I'm yelling. He says, I'm yelling from the sidelines. Line again, line yeah, up, yeah. get up to the ball. And he said he had enough sense to, to ground, spike, uh, you know, spike the ball, and we got a field goal with wow. one second to go. How about that? I know. He said that. And now that's, he said, that's good playing. He said, you don't always want him to not listen to the coach. But, right. But he said he was aware of everything around him wow. and understood the situation. I said, that's impressive. Gabe Welsh, just a junior. In fact, most of their playmakers are just, Sophomores and juniors yep. on this Knights football team. It's kind of a three-headed monster, really, when yeah. you look at it. Kiefer looking to pass. Dumps it over the middle to Messerly, and it's in and out of his hands. Incomplete. Second and ten. Bring up a second down and ten for the Irish. We mentioned Jaden Morales being back this week after getting injured last week. This will actually be his last game. He transferred in from Bloom Carroll, and of course OHSA transfer rules means he has to sit out the second 50% of the games, so they will miss him. He's been a big addition to this Fisher Catholic football team. Just a junior, though. He'll be back next year. Here's Owens, another good addition to this Irish football team. Good tackle there as he took the stiff arm pretty hard. Yeah. Third six. Brings up a third down and six. But you know, a play like that, Jared, and you, you'll watch here on the replay, play like that is just like a run. Yep. You know, if you can't get interior blocking, this is just as good as a run because you're on the perimeter with a playmaker immediately. It was a good job by Hutchison just to hang, or no, check that. It was uh, Hudson Harper to hang on to him and bring him down. And that's going to bring it up close. I don't think it's going to be a first down, but it's going to bring it to so about a yard, a yard short, maybe, Marion? Offside. I think they're still going to be just short. Yes. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains Makes it a down. little bit more manageable. Third and one right here from their own 26-yard line. And guys, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Irish raise up and maybe take a shot deep on this one. All right, we'll see what they do here. Owen stands right to the right of Kiefer. I mean, they've got 10, Owens is out 10 in, the, in the box. Owens takes the direct snap. And they snuffed that out in a hurry. That, that's going to lose about nine yards. Yeah, FCA had ten in the box. Yeah. I mean, there's just no way you can block all of them. Fourth down. Fisher will do that from time to time, where they'll line Peyton Owens up right next to Kiefer. He takes the direct snap, and sometimes he'll run it. Other times he'll pass it. I've never seen him run it that deep, though. Usually it's inside the ten-yard line. So Owens now will back up to punt. 
Back deep for Fairfield Christian. Again, I apologize. It is very difficult to see the numbers on those jerseys. Number zero, number two, that's Hutchison. Good play. And Blair. Kelsey Hutchison on the return. On the stop for Fisher Catholic. Looked like getting in there was Bobby Bennett. Also 13, Jacob Welsh. Well, I think Rusty Hutchinson's in the top 10 in Division 7 in Ohio. I think I uh, looked over some stats and uh, and Mark Max Preps, and he's right up there. You can see that he's got some speed. Yeah. And, and getting him on a punt return. I tell you what's impressive, too. When you come watch small school football, yes, it may not be the brand of football you're going to see from a Division 1 school, but you got to keep in mind, these players are playing offense, defense. They yep. never come off the field. And they also play multiple sports. I mean, these guys, as you see here, Nick Harris again for the second time tonight, Harry bust through the offense. There's a good shot at Nick right Harris. there. Lost his helmet, but man, I tell you, Nick's been a beast so far in that defensive line for the Irish, getting his first start. Right there in the middle. Second down at 10 for the Knights. Harris will have to take one play off after losing his helmet. Welsh sends his man in motion. Looking to pass, he has pressure. Nice screen pass, it's tipped, and then caught, and then fumble. Are they gonna call it a fumble? Yes, yeah, it are. looks like they are. One Recovers. guy's waving incomplete, one guy is calling Third it down. a stop the clock, okay. So the back judge was calling it a, a, a Fumble. Let's Watch see here. here. See if it Good was job of getting your hands on it there. See if it was possessed long enough. I think he had it. I can't. I can't quite see. Messerly recovered it. They're going to have a discussion about it in the middle of the field. If they want to review, we've got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so I. I you know, at this point, Shu, who gets, I mean, does the referee take, we'll get it here. It's an incomplete pass, it'll be second down. So on something like that, when, when some, one official calls it one way, another calls it the other way, who gets the They'll discuss the final who say? had the best view, they thought, okay. and then go over, you know, the what ifs. Yeah. Probably a right call. Third down. Pressure on Welsh, and he's sacked in the backfield. Getting in there, C.J. Robers for the Irish. Steve Wells sacked on the play by number 51, C.J. Wow. Robers. A big Four loss. Ball. That's a huge loss. He had no chance. Tell you what, I've been impressed with Fisher Catholic's defensive line. The push they're getting has been impressive tonight. Blair to punt it away. Again, a nice end-over-end -end kick. That's going to be rolling inside. Up, oh, he's in the inside. Is he? No, they're going to down it at the one. Wow. wow. Fisher Catlin takes over first. And I don't know the high school rule. To be honest with you. What do you think, Marion? Well, I know. I, I thought for sure his uh, lower half of his body was in the end zone there. The ball was not. Um, and I'm, I, I'm not, I admit, not uh, schooled <laughs> enough on the high school rules. I know in the NFL that would have been a touchback. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, yes, the ball was out, but his body sure looked into me. Or sure looked into me. We are told in our ears that uh, in high school and college, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the ball, not the, uh, not the man. So there good go. job by Fairfield Christian. And, and two really good punts by T, uh, Danny Blair tonight so far. Screen pass over to Peyton Owens just to get him out of the yep. end zone. And he's going to gain a couple. Smart play. It is. Fairfield Christian's playing really up. They are really challenging them to, to beat them. And they're they're going to have to throw something vertical at some point to make them pay for it. Otherwise, they're just going to keep coming up and being aggressive. Owens comes out limping. Coming in to replace him is Luke Carnes on second down and eight for Fisher Catholic. Three receivers to the near side. Ethan O'Reilly stands to the right of Grant Kiefer. Kiefer pressured in the end zone, looking to pass. There is a flag. Kiefer runs it out to about the 12 yard line, but if that's a hold in the end zone, that's gonna be a safety. Kiefer tackled out of bounds by number 11, Jimmy Schmitz. It is a hold. 
Was it in the end zone? We're going to see here. Yes, it was. I heard him say it. play holding, holding offense due to the penalty being in the end zone it is a safety so a hold on Fisher Catholic in the end zone that gives Fairfield Christian two points and then they will get the ball as well so with 258 to play in the first quarter it is nine nothing Fairfield Christian Fisher Catholic just kind of shooting themselves in the foot a couple times tonight. Yeah, you just have to know. I mean, it's, it's easy to say. I, I get it. But yeah. you just have to know that you cannot commit that penalty in the end zone. Well, and guys, uh, you know, one thing I'll point out, give credit to uh, the special teams of the Knights. You know, that punt that, j you know, sailed over the head of the returner. And, you know, normal, you know, had that been a normal punt, the punter gets under it, gets their hand up in the air. Uh, you know, ball's dead at the 10, 15 yard line. The fact that it rolled down, they were able to make a play on special teams, get them down to the one, which resulted in a safety three plays later. Just again, three facets. When you play well in all three facets of the game, you give yourself a much better chance to win. Yep, you're right. So Fisher Catholic will now have to kick it off or punt from the 20 yard line. And Owens, remember, went out earlier limping. He is their kicker and their punter, but he's coming back out. I look like, you know, FCA is going to have good field position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really need somebody with some binoculars up here. <laughs> A spotter, per se. So Owens to kick it off after the safety. Not the best of kicks for Peyton Owens. That's going to compound things because that goes out of bounds. Another penalty for Fisher Catholic. Ball be at the 47, 46. Legal kick out of bounds. 48. I don't know. He's walking around over there. Looks <laughs> like he's going to be. Where's he bringing it? Um, are they going to make him re-kick? Looks like it. They are going to make him re-kick. So Fairfield Christian wants a chance to return one, is my guess. I mean, they would already have the ball on, their, on the other side of the 50. FCA elects for a re-kick. That's not a call you see every day, guys, but when you got athletes like Fairfield Christian <laughs> has, I, you know, I guess you want the ball in their hands wherever That's you true. can. I'm going to have to ri rely on you a lot tonight, Marion, to tell me who these guys are. It, it is impossible to see the numbers on their jerseys. I'll Very do my difficult. best. I'm, I'm struggling even from where I'm at, guys. I mean, <laughs> it's really tough to see those numbers. I believe it's Rusty Hutchison and Danny Blair back deep. That's right. Two and two and four. Two and four, that's there right. There you go. There's, that's what we're – so imagine you sitting at home watching this, trying to see that from where we are way up in the top of the press box. Dark blue jersey on a dark gray I mean, a dark blue number on a dark gray jersey is just really difficult to see. As they are moving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's where we are. Yeah. And the sun's in your eyes. Well, it's gone down now, it's gone but down earlier now, yeah. in the game. Yeah. yeah. We had no chance earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so Owens now will kick it off from the 15-yard line. That's a better kick. Yeah. Gets a leg in it. Will be taken at the 34-yard line by Blair. Blair out to the 50. Uh-oh, Blair might be gone. Blair down the near sideline to the 20, the 10, and it's a touchdown return. That's why, that's why they made him re-kick. When you have a returner like that, why not? Yep. Actually, Blair scored really all nine of those points. Yeah, you're right. Or at least eight of them here, I yeah. mean. Because his, his punt, what, he was shot out of a cannon, Jared. Just straight line. I'm not sure he was touched at all the entire the entire time. Just like his run earlier on offense, he was not touched. So Hutchison to kick the extra point. Good snap. 
And it is up and good. Rusty Hutchinson's kick is good. So a 2.48 to play in the first quarter. It is Fairfield Christian 16, Fisher, Fisher Catholic zero. zero. Let's go, Fisher! Some uh, games going on around the area tonight, other games. How about this one, Shu? Not too often, at least lately, that we've heard this. 3-1 and one Miller at 0-4 oh Burn Union. That could be a really, really good game down in the Grove tonight. Well, and I think also Miller's improved, number yes, one. Yes, they I, have. I know one of the really coaches have. there. And they've also scheduled – People that are more common sure. in the situation that they're in. That's big. Yeah. Two and two Amanda Clear Creek is at 0 and 4 Circleville tonight. 4 and 0 Logan Elm at 2 and 2 Fairfield Union. 0 and 4 Liberty Union at 3 and 1 Bloom Carroll. Good one up in Hilliard tonight. 2 and 2 Lancaster at 2 and 2 Hilliard Darby. That should be a dandy. 4 and 0 Gahanna at 2 and 2 Pick Central. That's another one you don't hear too often. 2 and 2 Pick Central. No, but both losses were to very good yep. teams. I, I wouldn't throw that. Um, wouldn't throw it away yet right. on Pick Central. 4-0 Pick North at 0-4 Reynoldsburg. 1-3 Franklin Heights at 4-0 Canal Winchester is off to a great start. 3-0 Harvest Prep at 3-1 Center Grove, Indiana. And then tomorrow, I've never heard of this school, 100 West Virginia will be at Millersport. 100 is 1-2 and, and Millersport 0-4. And well, doesn't sound fair if it's 100, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So Fairfield Christian to kick it away. They lead it 16-0 still in the first quarter. Every Short time. Short kick. Stewart will field it. Nice job by yeah. number 19, Gavin Stewart, to field that one at the 48-yard line. Number 19, Gavin Stewart. It just kills his return average. You know, <laughs> yeah, you that's know? true. <laughs> that's true. From the 47-yard line. So the Irish take over. Good field position this time. Much better than the last time when they had it backed up down to the one. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, and Marion brought it up about special teams. You know, it really played out as good as they could ask yeah. in that situation. Kiefer with Ethan O'Reilly to his right. Looking for a short pass. Now he throws deeper to Messerly. Underthrown a bit and then tipped. Messerly had a step. He had his man beat. Yeah, just a little underthrown. I like the play call. Yeah. Gave a little, head, little shoulder fake, brought him up a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, it looked like the protection didn't hold up quite that long, guys. Didn't give, um, uh, didn't give Kiefer a chance to step into that throw. That's why it was short. Yeah, he had to, it was actually a jump there. We're watching the replay <laughs> right now. He had to jump. Yeah. to get it over that defensive pressure coming in at him. Well, I think you're going to see that all night with as aggressive as uh, FCA's yeah. defense is. Kiefer again looking to pass, flushed out of the pocket. He may just tuck it here. Looking, he still passes it, and nice catch! And oh. that should be a penalty right there. Peyton Owens, maybe not. He, maybe he was still in bounds when he got hit. Nice job of footwork on the side. Really line. nice job by Peyton Owens. And how about the job by Kiefer as yes. well? Keeping to scan the field. Make the decision to pass it. He instead of you know running out of bounds, he saw that he had a man and took a hit after he threw it. Yeah, that's probably a, um, that's probably a flag on. It the was a big. It was a big yeah, hit too. Probably was. First and ten, Irish at the Fairfield Christian thirty-four. Kiefer looking to pass, has pressure, and he's going to be sacked all the way back at the forty-nine. Now they're going to say forward progress at the forty-six yard line. 11 yard loss. Wow. On the play by number 50, Caleb Debra. You know, you're not going to have a lot of time. No. You have to understand that. Oh, you can see FC's defense is just really good. I mean, just coming right up the middle. They too. are. They're just coming. And they're coming with, you know, there's six guys right there, Jim. Yeah. Trying to get a number on. I'd like to give credit to those guys who are. It's hard. It is. But it's hard to tell. 50. Caleb Debra, man, he's getting a real big push off that defensive line, just coming right up the middle. Number 50, Kiefer, long pass. He's got a man. It's Owens. It's out of his hands. Keeping wow. Pass intended for number two, Peyton Owens. But good defense. I tell you, maybe that uh, that's what caused the, the miss there because the defense put on, I believe, was that Harper? Hudson Harper. Hudson Harper was right with him step for step. And that was a nice throw there. Yeah, it was. Hudson Harper's made a couple plays tonight. 
defensively for the Knights. Third down and 22 for Fisher Catholic. Here they come. Kiefer this time rolls to the opposite side, going to tuck it and run. And gets up to about the 36-yard line. Kiefer on the carry tag with number 52, Sam yeah. Workman. You make up about half the distance. Yep. You got to go. Now you, now you got to go forward and forth. The punt's sure. not going to do you any good nope. here anyway. That's probably a pretty good decision right there, Jared. So fourth down and 12 at the Knights' 36-yard line. See what the Irish come up with here. Kiefer will be under center. They may go on a hard count here to try to get some more yards. Kiefer rolls out. He's got pressure, and he is yeah. brought down at the 46-yard line. Kiefer sacked on the play by number 51. That, that is, is right not what you want on fourth down right there. First and 10, FCA from the 45-yard no. line. He just could not escape him. I no. mean, just he was unblocked. You can watch here. He's really unblocked, Jared. Is that Deborah again? 51. Ezra 51 Embry. this time. Yeah. Ezra Embry. Made Ooh, a nice wow, play. that looked yeah. dangerous, too. Dangerous there. Good to see Kiefer get up. Not yeah. only the leg, but then he smacked his head off the ground as well. But for Fairfield Christian, first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. They lead it 16-0 with 53 seconds to play in the first quarter. Here's Danny Blair. Some Fisher fans wanted to block in the back, Blair in the backfield, but Blair's going to pick up about four on the play, three yeah, or four. That was a better job of just extending the play there and having more pursuit by the Fisher defense. You know, Blair runs hard. Yes, he does. So second down and seven. Abe Welsh, quarterback, will work with no huddle. Gives it to Blair again. Blair over the right side, close to the first down. Brought down just shy of the marker by number 74. Blair that's Caden Delabar. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. With Fairfield Christian leading this one 16 0. And Shu, that gives us an opportunity to uh, thank That'll some sponsors. Yeah, and as a reminder, you can find live and past games on your, our YouTube channel. Just search for CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube to find games and other local programming. While you're there, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any action. Also, if you're on Facebook and X, used to be Twitter, <laughs> search us out on those social media platforms as well. Just search for Interface Video Productions. Looking at some scores from around the area, Circleville leads Amanda Clear Creek in the second quarter, seven to nothing in that one. Circleville at 0-4, and, and Amanda Clear Creek comes in at two and two. Logan Elm leads Fairfield Union 20 to nothing. Logan Elm is uh, is off to a really good start this year, yeah. also 4 0. Coach Holbert has them rolling. Yes, down he does. There. Bloom Carroll leads Liberty Union 14 0 in the second quarter. No score reported. Burn Union uh, hosting Miller. Also, uh, no score in the second quarter. Lancaster at Hilliard Darby. Tell you what, the Gales last week, uh, you had a chance to see that one, played some outstanding defense. Their defense was lights out. And, you, you know, I, I really think they wore New Albany down with yeah. their running game, and then they really executed. Jared, there were no turnovers, very few penalties, and they just played a nice, clean football and game. And turnovers is really what has hurt Lancaster yes. early in the season. They're, they're, you know, no team will withstand three, four turnovers right. in any game. It's, it's pretty hard. You'll be lucky if you win. Not to mention how many plays they made on third and long guys to get yeah. out of tough situations. Very impressive. Right here, it's third and one for the Knights. And we've got a whistle flag and a flag. flag. Somebody moved early. Get the official call here. That goes from a third and one to a third and six. Dead ball. False start. Offense number three. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Shoot, you already mentioned our uh, officiating crew tonight. We had a chance to talk to these guys. So far tonight, they've done a nice job. They're yeah. very professional. They get together when they need to. And you said they made a long trip to get here, didn't they? From a lot of different places, from Sugar Creek up in the Amish country to Wadsworth and Massillon. Wow. Um, I, I know. It's, it's a uh, long trip. Yeah, it is. 
Welsh going to keep it himself, trying to get to that outside. Hyde O'Reilly's got him wrapped up and will bring him down for a sack and a loss of about six or seven on the play. Fourth and 13. Got to bring up a punting situation for the Knights. You know, with the exception of the one uh, really good run by Blair yep. in the first quarter, the defense has played well. They really have. You know. One long run on offense. Yeah. Well, and they then kick that off min- return for a touchdown. Yeah, and that two-minute stretch yeah. of a safety and a run back is puts you at 16-0 all of a sudden. Yep. Makes it tough. Owens back deep for Fisher Catholic. Blair to punt it away for the Knights. He's gotten some good ones tonight, and again, wow, look at that hang time on that one. Yep, that's Owens good. Owens fields it at the 16-yard line. Is there anything that Danny Blair cannot do? That's the no, question. that's an outstanding punt there. And I will say, Danny Blair comes from a very good family, some good friends of mine uh, that I actually went to high school with. Uh, Josh and Misty Blair went to Meg's High School with them, graduated in 1994, and uh, they have uh, taken in Danny and TJ, and that it, it just a tremendous, tremendous family. I have the utmost respect for uh, that family and Danny and TJ and uh, all the other Blair kids. All of them are outstanding athletes. As a matter of fact, I talked to Connor earlier tonight. He's a golfer for Fairfield Christian. Donner Caitlin is a softball player. Here's – that's number 10. That's Morales. We mentioned him earlier. Good job by Jaden Morales. Well, I like that play better for Fisher offense. You get rid of the ball. You know, you take quick steps back. Watch here on the replay. One, two, three. Ball's in the yep. air, Jared. Um, with the problems they have in the aggression of the FCA, I like those throws I do much too. better. Get the ball out. Get it to your receivers. And they've got a lot of guys that can do that. They can catch it. They've got Morales and Owens and O'Reilly and Messerly and Bennett. I mean, they've got plenty of guys they can spread it around to. First and ten for Fisher Catholic. Here they come. Immediately, he's on the run. <laughs> And he's doing a good job of fleeing it. He's to the 40, down the near sideline. Kiefer to the 40, the 30, down inside the 20, and pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. A great run by Grant Kiefer, and no flags on the play. Who was that that saved that touchdown? Let's see right here on the Dagger Law replay who it was. (laughs) Great cut right there. And a good job by the uh, Fisher Catholic guys to not hold Absolutely. Let's see who caught him for Fairfield Christian. Again, if the numbers weren't so hard, we would already 12. know. 51 again. Yes. Wow. How about the speed of Ezra Embry? I mean, I felt like I was watching a, r- a horse race right well, there. He came out of nowhere. Just not even the speed, but a great effort to not give up. Yeah. You catch a guy from behind. First and 10 for the Irish. Peyton Owens now takes the direct snap. Looking to pass. Fires it to Hyde O'Reilly. Touchdown, Fisher Catholic. Pass complete to number four, Hyde O'Reilly for the touchdown. Tell you what. That's a nice throw. We mentioned Small Peyton window. Owens. Sorry about that. Peyton Owens. Owens has scored three diff- four different ways this year. He's thrown passes for touchdown. He's run them in. He's caught them, and he's kicked field goals. That's called most multiple vers- multi versatility. Yeah, he's really talented. That's really a, nice. That's a small window right yes, there. It was. Good throw. Good catch. Good pattern. And then Owens now will line up to kick the extra point. There's a good shot of the Fisher Catholic student section. It's Jersey night here tonight for Fisher Catholic. And Fairfield Christians, the home team. Yeah, and this looks like neon night across the way for them. Extra point is up, and it is good. So with 10-18 to play in the first half, Fisher Catholic's on the board. They cut it to within single digits at 16 to 7. You know, he, he ad-libbed and made a great play there. Yep. And a good play call, too. I mean, your, your quarterback just ran, what, 70 yards, 60, 60, 65 yards, and the very next play, go ahead and get – Owens in and uh, well, have him throw it. And him running to his left. You know, we talked, Mario and I talked about this last week, and I talked to some other people this week to make sure that I'm not totally right. But going to your left is not easy to get those shoulders right. square and throw the ball. But he did a nice job right there. Well, Peyton Owens is also a middle infielder <laughs> on the baseball field and a pitcher, so it's 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 pretty natural. So is Kiefer. 
uh, also plays middle infields. I, I really think that, you know, and if you talk to um, Patrick Mahomes, you know, a lot of those right. quarterbacks, they, they accredit their ability to, to move like that and throw in different angles to baseball. Well, this time they don't have to kick off from their own 15. <laughs> <laughs> so Owens will tee it up at the 40. It'll be Blair and Hutchison back deep for the Knights. Coach Tim is coming down to have a word with Morales. And then Morales relays the message to Owens. I'm sure that's, hey, don't kick it to Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, I don't care if you kick it out of bounds. Don't kick it to Blair. End over end kick will be taken at the 28. He jumps up to get it. That's number 12. Yeah. Is that 12? Is that turn by number 12. Braden, Braden Stem? 12, yeah, yeah Stem. Still good field position, yeah. though. Stim is a catcher for the Knights baseball team, which uh, I tell you what, they've got a really, really good baseball team. Just a really good crop of athletes going through at uh, Fairfield Christian over the next four years. Yeah, Coach Parton talked about, you know, they really only have, they have a small roster of 21 right. players. And, you know, his, one of his biggest concerns is how to keep them in shape without overusing them. Right. And then, you know, that's realistic. How much do you practice? How hard do you practice? How much you got to practice enough to simulate the game, but there's a lot of uh, push and shove there. Yep. you got to really kind of figure that out. Okay. Dead ball. Offsides. Defense, number 74. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. I think uh, Jeremy James has done this before. Time or two. Oh, He's yeah. very comfortable with the microphone on. First and five for the Knights. They mix it up and go on a longer snap count. Pulls yeah. Fisher Catholic off. Empty backfield, Jared. Four receivers on the left. Yeah, yep. wow. Welsh will keep it himself right up the middle. Wow, big hole there. Welsh looking for blockers and will finally be brought down at the 40-yard line. That's a gain of about, what, 18 Logan on the play? And they're going to try to hurry up. First and 10 that's it. Watch here. There's only four four down linemen for Fisher and one linebacker. So they're going to take what they're given. Yep. He's quicker than we even thought, <laughs> right? <laughs> he really got through that hole. <laughs> First and ten. That's what you call an instant, instant replay. Yeah. Same play, a little bit to the left this time. Going to be brought down by number 68, Alex Snoke, as well as Drew Maddy. Seven and six. Second down, and looks like seven for the Knights. Yeah, and the same set offensively here, Jared. Going on that hard snap count again. Welsh screens it out to the left side. It's caught behind the line of scrimmage, and a good run after catch. Flags on the play. Was that four? Was that Blair? I thought yeah. we had a hold. It was there. Blair, but okay. it looked like a hold out wide. Yes, right in front of Blair. Holding against Fairfield Christian Academy. You know, some plays work better when you do that. I, so you, you know, know. sure. I was watching a game <laughs> last <laughs> weekend. It's a ten-yard penalty. Remains second down. I don't even remember what game it was, but there was a long run for a touchdown, and everybody's going nuts. And one of the uh, announced the cop, the commentator said. There's a reason it went for that far. <laughs> There's a flag on the pl on the play, and there was a hold. And it reminded me a lot of you, Shu. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are reasons why things work better. Yeah, sometimes. you're right. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Second and 20 after the penalty for the Knights. Now we've got a stoppage. Line judge on this side coming in. Might be a question of where the hold happened. Right in the spot. They're talking it over. Well, 
a 10 yard penalty. Right. And and but, the, but it's the not pass it's was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Right. It's where the, it's, it's where the pen penalty happened. Yeah, it's not from the line right. of scrimmage. Fans, join us, for, join us for a night that is sure to be full of fun, music, and community featuring talent entertainers from Chicago, Illinois. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the show is from 7 to 10. Where's that Jeopardy music? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Available, exactly. $40. Have your boards provided? A cash bar will be available as well as a silent auction. So let's Make see where they decide to spot it. Songs and join in the fun. You can purchase tickets at the door on Saturday. So it looks like they move it up about four, three or four yards to the maybe, 46. Uh, maybe the ball was at the block and holding was uh, in front of the play. It must have been. Yes. Still second down and 16, 904 to play in the first half. Empty backfield. Welsh looking to pass. He's got a man down there, but one-on-one -on -one coverage. Wow, what a catch. Oh my. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Knights. Rusty Hutchison. That was impressive. He's averaging 32 yards a catch. How about that? Wow. And you can see why. Because that was well played defensively. I mean, it was. Except you got to knock the ball yeah. down. And Good he's, throw. he's not a big guy either. No, he, but he's he's got speed. Yep. And he's a youngster. He's just a sophomore. Watch this Dagger Law replay right here. This is an impressive catch. I mean, it's just a fly route. He just throws it up. I mean, Bobby Bennett was on. Bobby the was right there. Yeah. He just didn't didn't get the ball. Right. Hutchinson's credit, he stayed focused and caught it. Blair's extra point is up, and good. Kick is good. Makes it 23 right, to seven with 8:56 to play in the first half. Seven. Well, you know, in that formation with that empty backfield, what they saw, Jared, is they had all four guys. This was an island out here for Bobby. He had to play yep. one on one against their best receiver. And, you know, credit to FCA, they made the play, and it yep. worked. Well, not only that, guys, if you recall, right before that, which is right before the delay, they had swapped uh, for um, Hutchinson to come over to the other side of the formation and had the other receiver go back there. So, as you say, Shu, I'm sure that they saw something, and they said, hey, let's get athlete on athlete, one of our best out there on an island, and take advantage of it. Again, it might even been more impressive than the catch was the fact that he stayed on his feet and didn't <laughs> go to the ground, had the center of gravity to stay up and get in the end zone. Yeah. I mean, Bobby Bennett, the man on defense there, uh, just a five foot, 638 pound sophomore. It was sophomore on sophomore, and neither one of them very big, but tell you what, Hutchison, uh, with, with great concentration on that catch to bring it in. Yeah, it really was. So with 8.56 to play in the first half, Fairfield Christian, another big play. Really, that's what it's been tonight for them. It I mean, has been. It, the big plays are well, what's been scoring for them. Well, think about the players that have made those. They are the three that have been all year. Blair, right. Welsh, and Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Yep, you're right. I mean, they are. The, it's a three-headed monster yeah. they've got. And they do a good job of getting them b the ball where they can do some things. Right. That doesn't mean the other players aren't as vital and important, but those are the three playmakers. It'll be Blair to kick it off again. All night tonight, they've had little short kicks and some even onside kicks to this near side. We'll see if they do it again. Yes, they will. This time it'll be caught by Robers. A good job again by Robers to catch it at the 40-yard line. That was actually two kicking off on that one. It was, okay. Yeah, Hutchinson. Hutchinson. The Irish with a pretty good field position at the 40-yard line. One thing that Fisher has done well is cover those kickoffs. You know, a lot of times you, you when you're not expecting that type of kick, I mean, right. Robers is a lineman, and he's <laughs> done a great job twice fielding those, uh, those short kicks like that. Kiefer, screen pass over to Owens. Owens, stiff arms, and will be knocked out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. Again, I like that on first down. Yep. I mean, that's a, that's a run. Extend the defense. It's quick. Got four yards. Hey, you move, you move the marker. Forward progress moves them out to the 44. Timeout by Christian. All right, Fairfield Christian takes the timeout. FCA.
So it will give us a chance to, uh, again, check some scores around the area. We've got some some good games going on. Of course, up in uh, Hilliard, the Lancaster Gales and Hilliard Darby are still scoreless. No, check that. Hilliard Darby just put a score on the board, 7-0 in the second quarter. Uh, Circleville still leads Amanda, 7-0 in the second quarter. It's 21-0, uh, Bloom Carroll now over Liberty Union. Still no score reported, Miller and Byrne Union. Logan Elm, 27-0 over Fairfield Union in the second quarter in that one. So some uh, some good games we're going to keep an eye on for you tonight. And a big shout-out to Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Marion, uh, we have a stoppage here. Uh, your, your Bobcats, a big one tomorrow. They host uh, the Iowa State Cyclones down at Peden Stadium. Yeah, it should be a fun one. That's our Bobcats, by That's, the way, yes, our yes. Bobcats. <laughs> I'm also an Ohio Bobcat graduate. <laughs> yes, yes, but no, very excited about uh, tomorrow's game. Again, the Bobcats have had a pretty good season, dropped that first one to San Diego State, but have a lot of problems coming into this season. They've got you know great quarterback, Curtis Rourke. Um, coming off injury, should be good to go tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Takes me back to the days we I actually played at Iowa State uh, my junior year. Uh, didn't come out so great for us. It was like one of the hottest football games I ever played, <laughs> but it was it was fun to be out there. I said you're Bobcats because you actually suited up and played. I was just a fan. <laughs> okay. In a, in a grad. Fair so, enough. Uh -oh, fair fumble enough. on the play. On Kiefer the was hit hard and lost it, and it's recovered by recovered Fairfield Christian. By Fairfield Christian Academy. So the Knights will take over in Fisher Catholic territory, and it looks like the 42-yard line. I mean, that's twice they've had possessions of one play. Yep. You know, that's too bad. That makes it a lot of pressure on your defense. I don't know if we had a replay to see who made the hit and then the recovery on the fumble. It was a good hit, though. He got hit hard. Here it is. Again, you don't have a lot of time. No. So your plays have to be quick, precise. Looked like once again, number 50, Caleb Debra on the hit that forced the fumble. On the end around here, this one might go for a touchdown. Still on his feet down inside the 20, and Hyde O'Reilly is able to get him after he came number out of a spin. But another carry. big run Tackled for the Knights. Four, Hyde O'Reilly. Schmitz First on the run. First and 10, inside the 20 for Fairfield Christian, already leading at 23 to seven with 8.28 to play in the first half. Coming around the near side, this time again, it, this time it's TJ Blair, number zero, and Hyde O'Reilly again on the carry. stop. Yeah, real good job by um, the corner. Right, number 10. Bobby, Bennett. Bobby Bennett. Bobby did a great job of keeping him back inside, and Hyde really yeah. gave. Um, great pursuit. Really good job playing that. I mean, it's a no game. I mean, you, you can't ask much more out right. of your wide people. Second and ten. After the first down, no game. Well, she'll reset Danny Blair to his left. Welsh just going to keep it himself around that left side. Welsh trying to get to the corner inside the five and wrestled out of bounds by again by Hyde O'Reilly. But a good run by Danny Gabe Welsh. Morales. Yeah, Danny Blair threw a really good block. I think it was Danny. Danny. He really sealed sealed the corner for him to get around. Turned his body parallel to the sideline and just, you know, all, all Gabe did had to read it. Go. And Welsh is coming off the field now. They'll line up somebody else at quarterback. Unless they're just going to direct snap maybe to Danny Blair. Welsh came off. We can't see the numbers, so. I believe it will be Blair, number four, taking the snap. 
It is Blair, just gonna keep it himself, gets out of one tackle and another tackle, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, I mean, from a coaching aspect, that's a that's a great job to get the ball to your best player, but yep. actually Fisher Catholic had people there, just you gotta make tackles. Right. So Blair now will tee it up to kick the extra point. I just got a score texted to me from up at uh, the Pick, Pick Central Gahanna game. 42 to seven, Gahanna leads with 2.53 to go in the second quarter. It's been a long time. Wow. <laughs> Something like that's gone on. Wow. That's at Pick Central. I believe it's their last game on their old Is field. that right? I think so. On the Extra point was blocked, but there's a flag. And there's a reason it was blocked. Offsides against Fisher. And now I think they might decide to go for two. They're yeah, some birds flying in formation here. Yeah, the geese, the victory. See the V. <laughs> yeah. There's a story about that. I don't know if you've really? ever seen it, about leadership and how they fly. And okay. Yeah, I have to get that to you. Yeah. Sometime. It's, it's interesting. They're always like that too. Huh. So after the. Penalty moves him up to the one. Fairfield Christian now will go for two. Why not? Yeah. Oh, well, you, you only need a yard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't see this as a sign of disrespect at all. I mean, this I one know. yard is probably a higher percentage to make this than an extra point kick. Stem, I think it's Stem taking the direct snap and. 12, he is in for the two-point conversion two to make it 31 to seven with 7:23 to go in the first half. Yeah, Stem's had a heck of a game. I mean, a heck of a season as a linebacker. I mean, he's got 30 tackles out. Yeah. You know, he gets to carry the ball here. He probably feels pretty good about yeah. that. So again, Fisher Catholic hurting themselves with turnovers and Fairfield Christian taking advantage of it. It's a tough enough job to play the game, but when you turn it over, it just it just blows everything out of proportion. Yeah. What you're able to be able to, what you're able to be able to do. Right. So the Knights, with that 31 to seven lead, will kick it off to Fisher Catholic. Still in the first half here, 7:23 to go. Not a bad crowd on hand for on both sides for this local matchup. Back deep for the Irish will be Hyde O'Reilly and Peyton Owens. Blair to kick it off for the Knights. Check that, Rusty Hutchison to kick it off for the Knights. This time he'll kick it a little deeper and Peyton Owens will return from about the 18 yard line. Owens is out of bounds at the 32. Yeah. Peyton Owens tackled out of bounds by number four, Danny Blair. And now a flag is gonna be thrown. I believe that's gonna be on late flag. Fisher Catholic on the sideline. I saw the ball or something was thrown in the direction of a Fairfield Christian player and the way coach Timmis is talking to Peyton Owens right now. I'm, I have to believe it was Owens that did it. So we'll get the call from the official. After the play, personal foul for the receiving team. It's a 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be first and 10, Fisher. So he had the. So that's going to back him all the way up to the 19-yard line. It's not a smart play right there. No, 15 yards is uh, got to keep it cool. Yeah, it's a big, it, it's an accurate penalty, but it's it's not one that you uh, uh, can really accept at that point. Not one to call out coaches, but I'm surprised Peyton is still in the game right now. If he's the one that the penalty was called on, pass over the middle, good pass and good catch. 
Kiefer to O'Reilly, picks up the first down to the 34-yard line. Number four, O'Reilly for a Fisher Catholic first down. Put that one on the money. That was a very good pass. Yeah, good deep cross pattern. Kiefer hit him in, the, in stride. I mean, you've still got seven minutes. I mean, it's... Right. Enough time to actually have a successful drive here. Got to protect the football and get some Again, quick blocking. Throws. Here's a good pass out yep. to Owens on the right side. Owens across the 40 and near another first down. You guys, I've been really impressed with Kiefer's release. You know, on those quick passes when he's decisive and gets it out there so fast. That's just additional time right. for those receivers when they catch it on the end to make a move and get upfield. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, you know, from a catbird seat here sitting, I mean, when he goes straight back, guys, he's just not going to have enough time. Right. It's just not going to be there. That little three-step and release is, is going to save him. That's when they've been their best all season. Get rid of it quick. This <laughs> typically has been the play that does not work for the Irish, but he's got a man out there, but he overthrows him out of bounds. Keeper's pass intended for number two, Peyton Owens. Second down. Second and 10 for Fisher Catholic. Clock stops at 6.15 to play in the first half. Beautiful night for high school football here in central Ohio. It's that time of year when it's perfect temperature during the day in the 70s, and then at night it cools down a little crisp at night. But still summer until the 23rd. Yeah. But this is ideal. It's beautiful. Kiefer pressured again and will be sacked again. Kiefer sacked on the play. Third down and 12 for Fisher Catholic. You know, one thing, guys, I've been a little surprised, and Jared, maybe you can speak to this, haven't seen a whole lot of screens out of yeah. Fisher Catholic. And, you know, when you have an aggressive defense like Fairfield Christian, you know, sometimes the screen can be a perfect play to use that aggression against them. I don't know if you've seen much of that in the playbook this year. But. No, we haven't. But, but when, when they have, that's when they've been very effective and methodical down the field and with long, sustained drives. I thought we might see that with this one, with the, you know, but – so far, we have it. There's a pass over the middle. It's underthrown to Bobby Bennett. Bennett was open, just underthrown a little bit. Brings up a fourth down in a punting situation for the Irish. So Owens will punt it away. Back deep for... Fairfield Christian yeah, he'll, he'll is number right. zero, T.J. Blair, I believe, on the near side. <laughs> and over on the far side, I believe that's Hutchison, number two. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> Owens, rugby-style punt, end over end. That's going to be out of bounds. That well, actually bounces inbounds. <laughs> be down at the 27 yard line. That's where Fairfield Perfect Christian will take over. I want to say thanks to our Interface Video Productions crew tonight. They always, always do a good job. They get here, I tell you, they have the tough job. They get here early set up they stay late tear down producer director tonight josh messerly also in in the truck with him shane messina donnie zigfeld on cameras tonight we have jim spires jason roush and tom russo there's jason and we have a timeout on the field fairfield christian will take it talking to coach barton he's very interesting this week and i i appreciate he and coach timmis taking the time to as always to Give me an opportunity to get a little feel for their team and have them express some things. They're, they're, they're both very transparent and very honest. And Coach Pardon just said, you know, he goes, one of the biggest things that concerns me as we have had a little success is how do we stay humble? Yeah. He goes, because last year that was their first ever win in the playoffs when wow. they beat Bridgeport. 
How about that? And he goes, I just remind him at one time that we, we lost like 30-some straight league yeah. games. Yeah. He goes, so don't get too full of yourself here. That's and, great. And That's that great is, to hear. No, that was really good to hear from Coach and, and you know, and, and get him focused. And he says, we take nobody lightly. Yeah. We're preparing for this team to this week. We don't look at past scores. We don't look at last week. We look at yeah. what we've got to do this week. How many did he say he has on the roster? Because I'm looking over there. I mean, 21. I see, I see maybe five on the bench <laughs> with a coach. And then, what, three or four over here standing? There's not many. He said 21. Wow. Wow, look at this run right here. Just running over people. Is that quarterback Welsh? That's Braden Stem, guys. Braden so Stem in the game. quarterback now. In the, at the quarterback position. He just lowered he's his shoulder and ran over top of somebody over there on the far side. taking that linebacker and himself back he's to yeah, the quarterback position, you know. Let me deliver the blow. He just gets around the end here. And that, that's messerly. That's hard to do. Yeah. No, that wasn't messerly. That was uh, Hampshire that he hit. Huh. First and ten. Good run by Stem. Another quarterback keeper here. This time it's Welsh. Ooh, there's a rough tackle there. And no, that's Blair who took the direct snap. Tackle made by Alex Snoke. No gain on the play. Guys, we have not seen Welsh back in the game ever since uh, yeah, right. Blair came in at that goal line stance and, and punched it in. So I, I'm not sure if there's an interest. Actually, he's just trotting back on the field tonight or right. just now. So Yeah, it had been a while. He, he took a hit out of bounds close to the goal line and stayed out here's that empty back backfield in. again they've got four receivers on the other side now another Fisher receive, uh, defenders going over second and 11 Welsh has pressure and will be brought down at the 41 yard line actually that's not Welsh that's listed as number 13 I don't have a 13 on my roster is that am I seeing that right Marion Yes, you are. Wow. Yeah, that is 13, and I don't have one either. <laughs> so I don't know who 13 is. You know, by the oh, wait, there. Yeah, I do have it. He, it's it's out of order on the roster. It's Parker Couch, sophomore quarterback. Hold on, guys. Ah, gotcha. Illegal formation. Offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. So our apologies to Parker. Go ahead, Mario. What were you going to say? Oh, no. I was just going to. Correct on the, uh, <laughs> I saw it as well. Second down and 15 for FCA after the penalty. Clock rolls at 4.18 to play in the first half. Couch spins and will finally be wrestled down Parker at the Cowell 41 and a flag comes in. That's probably going to be on Fisher Catholic. Could be a face mask possibly the way it came in there. Back by number 74, Nathan Dalabar. Yes, it is. 15 yards. foul face mask. Fisher. And that will give the Knights a first down. Results in a first down. Yeah, Coach Timoth mentioned this week that they've had what he would call just careless penalties. Yep. Nothing with intent or anything, just carelessness. And until you eliminate those and the turnovers, it's going to be tough. Yeah. And they, uh, they've they had to run a lot of hills for those penalties this year. I well, know that you're very familiar with that hill uh -huh. over uh, by the baseball field, behind the soccer field. Yeah, it's a nice steep hill. <laughs> it is. <laughs> they run it for every penalty. It's an attention getter. Yes, it is. This time it's Welsh on the pass. And he completes it over the middle, a little jump pass up to the about the 41-yard line. Yeah, the guy's trying to set like almost a middle screen there a little bit. Screen pass completes number four, Danny Blair. Second and seven. Can you bring up a second down and seven for the Knights. Clock rolls at 332 to play in the first half. And we have a timeout on the field, which means we can talk to you about what's coming up at halftime. We'll have the halftime band show. You're going to see, I believe, there's, are they still here? Uh, yeah, they're over here. Fairfield Christian Band is uh, getting set over on the far side. That band show will be brought to you by the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home. 
Crematory and Monuments, family owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. It'll also be brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do too. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. So out of the timeout, it will be Knights football, second down and seven. Welsh passes out to Blair, and a good job defensively this time. Hampshire rides him out of bounds for a loss. Stops the clock at, nope, it's still running. I guess forward progress was stopped before he pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, the official wound it. I'm fine with that. <laughs> third. third down and third 13. And Welsh with Blair to his right. Welsh looking to pass. Fires one deep down over the middle. Nice catch, and nice pass and catch. And it's going to be a touchdown, Fairfield Christian. This time, I think that's TJ Blair on the reception, number zero. Excuse me, number zero, TJ that's right, Blair. Jared. I tell you what, that was as good a throw yeah, as was. we've seen this year. I mean, Gage put this right there, Gabe. And a Look great catch. Yes. Stretched out. He had burnt his man and then just took it into the end zone. O'Reilly, lucky he didn't get called for the penalty. The ref was reaching for it, but when he, he scored, he's like, ah, yeah, he's in anyway. He's going to be declined. So. He didn't pull him down. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Big plays. A lot of big plays from yep, the you're right. Knights. Extra point. Oh, hits the crossbar. No good. No good. So a 2.36 to play in the first half. FCA all over Fisher, Christian Academy, 37 Fisher, 37 to 7. They had to make that live. You know, until the play ends. Yeah, Wouldn't why that not? be cool? Yeah. Yeah. Hit the crossbar or upright. Let's play it. Let's grab it. And <laughs> let's have a scrum like rugby. <laughs> uh, what What was that uh, years ago against Alabama? Do you remember that? Was it Auburn that returned? Yes. The uh, missed field goal? Yes. They had a guy back all the way in the yards. back of the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Auburn and Alabama. A handful of years ago, Auburn or Alabama lined up for a, a long field goal. It was well short, and the Auburn guy returned it from out of the end zone over 100 yards for the score to win it. I have a longtime friend that's an Auburn grad. <laughs> Believe me, there is no love lost down there for each other. I bet. None whatsoever. <laughs> and... Unfortunately for him, Alabama's had the last lap oh, here yeah. for quite a while. Yep. Knights will kick it away. Deep kick down the middle of the field. It'll be taken by O'Reilly. O'Reilly to the 20. And out to the 30-yard line, and looks like that's where he will be brought down. Hi, O'Reilly on the return. Tackled by number 55, Carson Holbrook. So the Irish go on offense at their own 30-yard line, trailing 37-7, 2.28 to play in the first half. Kiefer with O'Reilly to his right. Three receivers out to the far side. That's Ethan O'Reilly to his right. Hyde O'Reilly on the reception here out to the 44-yard line and across midfield inside FCA territory to the 42-yard line. Good, good job by O'Reilly after the catch. Really good throw and really good hands by Hyde O'Reilly to catch that ball in traffic right there. He's got the defensive back on his back and he caught that ball, Jared, and as you said, escaped and 
Gained another dozen yards after the catch. Kiefer again looking to pass. As O'Reilly again over on the near side. He's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. That was great awareness by Kiefer on that one, guys. He stepped, stepped up in the up, pocket, yeah. didn't even really get a chance to see his receiver out wide, but knew he was there and made the nice completion there to O'Reilly once again. You know, we talked about the FCA players being underclassmen. Hyde's only a junior. Yep. Five seniors on this Fisher Catholic team. Here's Owens on the reception. Owens to the 20 and out of bounds inside the 20. So far, a nice little drive here by Fisher Catholic. Simon Mesley did a really good job on the blocking over there to allow him to get that yardage, Jared. Clock stopped at two minutes to play in the first half. Kiefer gives it to Ethan O'Reilly. Ethan O'Reilly runs it in for the touchdown. I believe that's the first touchdown for freshman running back Ethan O'Reilly. Nice job. Slanted that, hit it hard off the right. Look how hard he's running, Jerry. Yep. Good job by O'Reilly. Owens will line up to kick the extra point out of the hold of Grant Kiefer. Into a the point after number two, Peyton Owens. Well, that broke the string of 21 straight for FCA. And Fisher needed a little yep. bit of something to pick him up. Owens kick is up and it is good. So 154 to go in the first half. 37 to 14 is the score. And the Irish will kick off. I just got another update from uh, that pick central game. It is at halftime, and I've been told that this will be the first ever running clock imposed on the Tigers at their home field. It's also the first one ever imposed on the Tigers in the regular season. Only the second running clock in the history of the program in the 2020 D1 state title versus Cincinnati St. Xavier. Wow. So. Well, you know, that doesn't sound real positive, but that also speaks of the great tradition and how many good Sure, teams. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we've seen them over the years. And to only have that happen to them twice, I mean, that's. And, and also, how, you know, what's that say about Gahanna? How good are they? Well, wow. you know, the battle's been uh, from discussion for the best Division One teams in Central Rogers, Gahanna and Pick North. Yeah. And they're going to have a head-on collision yes, they here are. at some point. But I know Pick North did beat Pick Central, but it was a dog fight. Yes, it was. Uh, I think 39-34 yeah. last week or the week before. So Gahanna, you know, we've seen them here too in the OCC, and they, they have really had – some very talented yep. players and being well coached. And just so. recently uh, reopened their new stadium. Yes. I believe, did they just build that right back on the same spot it was? That was or? the plan in that, that general area right there up on Hamilton Road. Okay. Yeah, Squib kick by the Irish will be taken right up the middle and gang tackled by Fisher Catholic. Here's the thing, too, you don't see with some of the bigger schools. A Brady lot of these kids not only play offense and defense, they're on the special teams, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Both ways, offense and defense of the special teams. If you like to play, it's a great place to be. Yeah, that's you know, true. You're going to get a chance to play. <laughs> that's true. First and ten nights. We are still in the first half. Minute 46 to play. Knights lead at 37 to 14. Welsh sends a man in motion. Going to pitch it out to Blair around that left side. Blair breaks a tackle, 
Picks up nine on the play. Anywhere finally on brought down by number 51, C.J. Robers. Well, here's the thing. You know, both, ro both um, rosters are not very big. So right. even if the game is 20-point difference or whatever, you got to play the kids you got. Yeah, that's true. I mean, so you're not going to, like, sub in a whole second team. There's not enough players. Especially on FCA side. Yeah. I mean, Fisher can do it. They've got plenty of guys standing over here, but FCA, I mean, you hardly see anybody over there. I only, you know, I'm, I'm going to count here, but. There's a pitch out coming to Danny Blair. Blair running hard. Wow. Lowers his shoulder, but a good job by the Irish. Leo Hampshire Danny and Blair Bobby right Bennett here. taking him on. Watch this replay Bobby here. Bennett. This is a collision right here. Well. Hampshire 7, Bennett 18. This is usually what we call football. Good tackle by Bobby <laughs> yeah. Bennett. Finish it off. And a whistle on a timeout going to be called by the Irish. Man, the third down the and three, 41 seconds to play in the first half. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the show is 7 to 10 p.m. Individual tickets are $30 and tables of eight. Don't forget, coming up, we'll have that halftime band show, the Fairfield Christian Band, we take the field. That'll be brought to you tonight by Frankie Smith Funeral Home and also Fairfield Federal. Shu, you talked about small numbers on the football rosters, but how about these small schools like this and the the courage of the small bands? I mean, Fairfield oh. Christian has what maybe ten, if that, and and just to go out there and we heard them play the national anthem. They're going to play a halftime show. Same thing with Fisher Catholic, a very small band, but. You know, they, they go out there and put their heart into yep. it just like these football players do. No, but you give them a lot of credit for being, you know, I don't know whether what you call it, but they have enough feeling and good feelings about themselves to go out and perform. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a good thing. There's the Irish band. Didn't realize they were here tonight. Down there on the near side. There's a run right up the middle. He's going to have the first down at the 40-yard line by about a yard. Danny Blair on the carry. So they will move the chains. Tackled by number 73, Jude Klum. Jude Klum on the stop first for Fisher Catholic. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. If you're FCA, I mean, at this point, we're still playing. Yeah. Got a halftime score, I'll tell you, in a minute from down in the Grove. Welsh looking to pass. He has pressure. Snoke couldn't bring him down. And what a catch, but yeah. I think he was out of bounds. TJ Blair, really good catch. Fingertip catch, but he was out of bounds. Halftime down at Sugar Grove. Miller leads Burn Union 16-6. I know Coach Herbs, he's looking for a win, man. Yeah. Yep. Second down and 10, 15 seconds on the clock. Welsh looking to pass over the middle. Kind of behind oh. his, his receiver, had to stop a little bit. Don't see that too often. No. Out of Welsh. Intended for number zero, TJ Blair, third down. TJ's a little disappointed yeah, himself, yeah. too. I know I've told players many times before, can't change that, change the next play. Right. Forget it. You right. got to flush it. Yeah, you really do. My son wears a, uh, a headband under his helmet that says, be a goldfish. I'll tell you what that <laughs> means in just a minute. Here's a long pass yeah. downfield. This one is caught inside the 10-yard line. Are they going to be able to, yeah, the clock will stop Hutchinson long enough to, to move They've the chains. Yeah. And they First do have a timeout. Let's call timeout. Yeah, they have two left. According to the scoreboard. And they spike it with one second on the clock. Spike. No, but as I was saying, uh, my son wears a headband that says, be a goldfish. That comes from Ted Lasso. Really, really <laughs> good show. I, I'm not a soccer guy, but this, is, one this show is phenomenal. Clock. And one of the things he tells one his players second. is, do you know what the happiest animal in the world is? It's a goldfish because he has a 10-second memory. <laughs> Whatever happens 10 seconds ago, he forgets it. <laughs> so I, I, I've told my teams that, and Gavin well, kind of took it to heart. To to bought goal. himself a headband to wear under his helmet and baseball hat. So Yeah, I do that now, and I don't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> 
field goal attempt for Fairfield Christian. I think it was wide right. Just wide it's right. No good. Bring us to as the clock expires. So we're at halftime. Fairfield Christian, the home team tonight, leads Fisher Catholic 37 to 14. Stay tuned, we'll have the halftime band show coming up on the high school football game of the week. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H, The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina.
American pop power pop song that utilized synthesizers, a playing pop guitar solo, and an ability to fill dance floors across the world. Know that you're not dancing on your own as we play our rendition of Ava Max's 2020 hit, Kings and Queens. Bay Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet brats for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years. Dagger Law has more than 110 years of experience in nearly every aspect of the law. When we're not just helping clients, we're helping the community. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and around town because we live and work here too. We are your neighbors, and we want to help you when you need it. When we help each other, we're stronger. Our community is stronger. Creating a strong, vibrant, healthy, and safe community is everyone's responsibility. And we take the responsibility seriously. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Hi, this is Kristen Glazier with Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care. We're here to promote compassionate end-of-life care by providing comfort, support, and resources for those experiencing palliative needs in our community. This month, we are grateful to be chosen as a recipient of the Buckeye Cares program. That means Buckeye will make a generous donation with every vehicle they sell this month. We really couldn't accomplish what we do without local support. Thank you, Buckeye, for helping our community. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your health care needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. Greetings from Fairfield DD. 
We begin to celebrate the much loved fall traditions as we move into cooler weather. We hope to see you at football Friday nights and the county fair. As you enjoy the season of changing colors, we also want to remind you of the change we hope to see. At Fairfield DD, we pursue a vibrant community where people lead fulfilling lives and everyone makes meaningful contributions. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about how we remain dedicated to our community. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Fairfield Federal, when it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the carriage company. You'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. So wait! I really like Fearful County because we're just a great mix. We're not so isolated that we don't have resources, but we're also small enough that it's a real community. And I will say that I don't think I've ever seen or worked in a place where so many partners in the community come together and are truly collaborative. I've been working at Fearful County for over 20 years and I've had a variety of positions within the county. Um, being a smaller county, um, I've been able to get to know the service agencies better and people that work within that. Um, so I've always had those opportunities to be creative, to think out of the box. And through those collaborations, we've been able to really build some wonderful programming for the youth and families. I think that everybody is really community minded and they're really focused on within the system of mental health care. They're really focused on getting people access to the care that they need and making sure that we're serving the people in Fairfield County. Community. Connections. Collaboration. The Fairfield County Way. I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Central Ohio home to thousands of businesses, large and small, each with owners and employees working hard to make their businesses work. We are the Savings Bank, and we're here for your business. When you call, we answer. When you email, we reply. And when you need a business loan, we get moving. Because in a market of thousands, we keep our eyes on your business. The Savings Bank.
Tim Shoemaker. Tonight, we've got a great one for you. The Blue Pair Bulldogs. Yeah, those great people practice, even in the rain and the weather. Schneider, lots of running room to midfield. See, he's yeah. gone. Ron Schneider down the near sideline for a touchdown for the Aces. We have a hold on the offense, number 20. That penalty will be declined. They'll bring up fourth down. And we're going to give you this game ball here because you're a Tiberios fan of the game. And thanks for being here, Jacob. Thank you. The Polar Bears are your OAC tournament champions. First time since 2009. What an exciting finish for the Ohio Northern Polar Bears. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. And we welcome you back to Fulton Field here at Lancaster High School. We're at halftime. Fairfield Christian, the home team on the scoreboard, leads Fisher Catholic 37 to 14. Before we get underway with the third quarter, I want to apologize I, I, for our, our I, I was promoing that we were going to have the FCA band at halftime. Uh, they are the home team tonight. It's a little different. They're the home team, but their fans are sitting on the opposite side, so their band played toward the sure. opposite side. Our cameras are shooting that way. It would have just been awkward, so we show the uh, Fisher Catholic band, so I want to apologize for that. But, Shu, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, you know, if it could go wrong for Fisher Catholic, it did go wrong for Fisher well, Catholic. Well, and some, you know, a lot of that credit goes to FCA. They, Absolutely. They got the ball to their, you know, their three players that were highlighted offensively, yeah. plus some other players have stepped up. They've played really well. I mean, they've had big plays yep. and explosive offense. Fisher had played some decent defense, but too many mistakes. Yeah. Just, you know, just the turnover of the ball has just put you at a big disadvantage. Fisher Catholic kicks off to begin the second half. And it's kind of squibbed out and fielded at the 30-yard line. Kicking down by number seven, Hudson Harper. First and 10. Harper downs it at the 30. And that's where Fisher, or Fairfield Christian will go on offense to start the second half. Leading at 37 to 14. They got several guys involved themselves uh, with Danny Blair, TJ Blair, Welsh, Hutchison. Yep. Welsh will hand it off, coming around the, from the far side to the near side. And that is Rusty Hutchison on the, Hutchison carry. On the carry. I mean, They've done a really good job. FCA has all night really getting that corner Second and, and getting around the corner on the quick Second handoff, two. Jared. And, you know, you gain seven, eight yards. You'll take that every play. Marion, uh, from your perspective, uh, you know, being in the locker room as a, as a player or as a coach, you know, a score like this at halftime from both sides. Tell us from both sides what's going on in the locker room at halftime. Well, you know, it's a good question. You know, on the, on the Fairfield Christian side, I think it's just a matter of just wanting to stay focused, stay poised, and really just keep doing what you're doing. Don't don't have any stupid penalties, stupid mistakes, things like that that can let uh, Fisher Catholic kick back in the game. So, again, it's just playing, playing a clean second half. And then I think with Fisher Catholic, it's, you know, building upon the things that you did well. And there were some things that they did well. Um, you know, some penalties really shot themselves in the foot, but they had, a, you know, a couple really nice drives. Kiefer's playing well at the quarterback position. So, again, it's just staying positive staying focused knowing that you know in a couple of scores you can get right back in this but you've got to stay positive on first down play goes all the way out of bounds good hard run again and this time it's the quarterback Leo welsh will pick up about four on the play seven. four or five leo hampshire hampshire on the stop seven. for fisher catholic 
Well, I think we also saw at the end of the half and probably, you know, as we see the start here, I, I think Coach Parton wants to see if they can establish the running game, mm -hmm. put a drive together because really a lot of big plays got them their points. Right. Not that you're going to back off or anything, but, you know, you want to see if you can line up and, and push the other team off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Well, she hands it to Blair right up the middle. Good hard run. Gets yes. the first down for the Knights. Danny Blair on the carry. Hey, we want to give some shout out, uh, give give Everybody some thanks to Fisher Catholic Alex Athletic Snow. Director Katie Gillum, uh, provided some food uh, to the truck and our guys tonight. Also want to say thanks to Marcus Parton, the Athletic Director at uh, Fairfield Christian. It, it, it's FCA. nice when, you know, these two teams are just across town. They're, neither one of them are playing on, I mean, it, it is Fisher Catholic's home field, but it's not their school. And these two schools and ADs have collaborated and uh, kind of taken uh, some some duties and responsibilities together. There's Marcus. Not only is he the coach, but he's also the AD. And so the, the, the two schools kind of came together. FCA took some of the responsibilities with volunteers, and so did F Fisher Catholic. And just nice to see the two schools being able to work together like that. And we want to thank uh, both of them for their hospitality for us tonight uh, and our setup and also Bulls providing us food. And, um, always I nice to be able to work with uh, hospitable people. Very much so. And you know what? It's a, always a good sign when you see collaboration. Absolutely. Second down coming up and six for the Knights. Clock rolls at 9.36 to play here in the third quarter. Wow, big hit by Simon Messerly leading the charge on that stop. Yeah, really good job of stepping up and, and, and filling that hole. Watch here. Here comes Simon. Oh, wow. Parker yeah. Couch on the carry, tackle by Simon Messerly. That was the backup quarterback again in the game. Parker Couch, he stays in with Stem in the backfield behind him. So Coach Parton doing a nice job, too, of getting some guys some – some playing time at positions that, you know, they may need them eventually. If somebody correct. gets hurt, they got to have guys ready to go. Couch fires one down wide open at the 12-yard line and running it in for, an, for a touchdown. I believe that's Rusty T Hutchinson. Rusty, Rusty Hutchison. What a pass by the backup quarterback. That's Parker Couch to Rusty Hutchison. How did he get so open? There wasn't anybody within 30 yards of him. Well, we see the replay right here. He gives a little shoulder fake. And everybody came running up. Yeah, nobody Jared. picked him up. Nah, nobody. No, it's lack of communication in the secondary. Well, and again, not only lack of communication, guys, they were in zero coverage there. So you kind of sell out to try to you know, stop the short stuff and stop the run, and you don't have anyone deep. And all it takes is one double move, as they had there on the pump fake, and you got a guy streaking wide open in the middle of the field. Extra point is up, and it is blocked. Extra point is blocked. FCA 43. Fisher Catholic 14. So with 8.41 to play in the third quarter, 43 to 14 FCA on top of the Irish. Peyton Owens with the block. So it will not be a running clock yet. One point short of that. Tonight's second half scoreboard sponsor is Buckeye Lake Marina. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. And I will tell you this, if you're on the lake tonight, it's going to be a little <laughs> chilly, the <laughs> water. Yes, it is. So Fisher Catholic now trails by 29. There you see it. Sure, you mentioned it's uh, cooling down. Good, good uh, evidence of it right there. People in their hoodies and... Blankets. Be a good sleeping night, we hope, for people. Yeah. Yeah. Try to uh, convince some people that we don't have to turn the furnace on yet. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my air on. <laughs> I guess I could turn that off and open some I, windows. I huh? think you'd be okay. <laughs> I did have the house open today. <laughs> Kickoff be taken by Sam Tenza, and he downs it at the 31-yard line. Down by number 22, Sam Tenza. Let's uh, take a look at the schedules for these two teams and what they have, what they've done up to this point, and what they have coming up. 
Well, hard to believe this is week five. We're halfway through this regular season, and uh, you see Fishers, uh, after tonight's game, they host Rosecrans and then go to Miller and then host Millersport and Burn. So they've got a very, very doable schedule yeah. that they can, you know, if they keep continuing to get better, they can have some success. First and 10 Irish, Kiefer rolling out to his right, looking to pass. He's got a man open. That's Simon Messerly complete at midfield. Good job by Kiefer Messerly to get open and for Kiefer Messerly to take his time and find him wide open. Yeah, watch him Dagger on the roll. Little replay here. Well, get away from the pressure a little bit, Jared. You know, we've talked about getting the ball out early. This also gets him. And he throws it pretty well on the move. And he was tackled after. I saw him talking to the official. He was tackled kind of by horse collar after he threw it. And I think he was wanting a flag there. They will take the, uh, the first down yardage on the pass any day. Here's O'Reilly. You don't see that often. O'Reilly misses one. O'Reilly incomplete second and ten. So to bring up a second and ten for Fisher Catholic. Messerly and Owens split out to the right side, as well as Morales. O'Reilly to the near side. Kiefer rolls and almost intercepted. And was it intercepted? Did he dive yeah. and make that catch on the tip? Yeah, he got that. Guy. They're so wow. Tip intercepted drill. Intercepted on the play. Let's watch it here. First and ten, Fairfield Christian Academy. Could have been intercepted on the first tip. Oh, nice job. Yeah, good Who effort. Who was that? Number 11 for Fairfield Christian. That is Jimmy Schmitz on the interception. And again, Senior Jimmy's linebacker. one of those players. He's had a really good season, and he also leads the team in 30 tackles. First and 10 Knights. Welsh, long screen pass. Behind the, uh, I guess he it was a forward pass. So yeah, good call by the uh, line judge yeah. out here. He was right on top of it. Incomplete, second and ten. Brings up a second and ten. Shoot, a lot of people enjoy watching games with a lot of passing and action like that. But I, but I tell you, it's it makes for long games. It does. A lot of incompletions and Fisher Catholic has already seen one game this year that lasted three and a half hours here at Fulton Field. Here's a pitch out to the left. I believe that's Blair running for a first down up to near the 40-yard line. Well, you know, Marion and I talked last week. What do you think about the rule uh, the college has gone to where, except in the last two minutes, the clock runs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it eliminates a lot of possessions. I get that. Mm -hmm. But what well, do you think? So here's <laughs> – I kind of – go back to baseball a lot. First and 10 FCA. I, I have a problem with the pitch clock and all that in baseball. Everybody else loves it because it speeds the game up. But they hate the speed up rule in college football. And and I don't mind it at all. I mean, why <laughs> not? Especially yeah. and especially when it when it's well, not so much on a Saturday afternoon game. But yeah. I'm talking you get to the you know those night games that don't start till eight, nine o'clock at night anyway, and then all the commercial break it, it just it, I feel bad for young kids when they want to watch a playoff game or, you know, things like that, and it doesn't start till 8 or 9, and they've got school the next day. Well, I, I will say this. I know I don't know how many years ago it was. I can't remember because they won so many, but one year Alabama won the national championship, and it, it was four hours, Jeff. The game was four hours. Yep. So I'm like, that's, that's a bit much. Right. Here we go. Good run here again. Jimmy Another Schmitz first down by Jimmy Schmitz. First and 10 FCA. Yeah, guys, and I can tell you as a player, again, not that I played in any kind of national championship <laughs> games, but I did play in some games that were nationally televised. And, you know, those commercial breaks seem to go yeah. on forever, you know, even as a player. Um, yeah. So, again, I know as a player you probably want as many possessions as you can as an offense, but it just as far as tempo and flow of the game, feel when you're out there, yeah, it, it can help a little bit. Well, when you're at a game live, at a college game or professional game, those, like you mentioned, those commercial timeouts seem like way longer than when you're sitting yeah. on your couch. Right. <laughs> Well, you also head to the refrigerator <laughs> exactly. in between, too. You know? yeah. 
Come or, you, back. or you start watching it late <laughs> so you can fast yeah. forward through the commercials. That's right. <laughs> the best way is to DVR them. Exactly. Not know them. That's how I watched the Buckeye game last week. I didn't have to have any distractions, yep, yep. no commercial breaks. And it still took two hours. Right. But. And, Shu, you asked me at halftime about the Reds. You shouldn't have. Oh. They were up 3 nothing when you asked me. Now it's 3-3. Three, three. Pete Alonzo hit a three-run homer. Wow. <laughs> well, he's certainly capable. He's done that a few times, yeah. as we know. Second down and eight. Welsh takes the snap and just runs it himself and has another first down yeah. to the 25. Welsh on the really good right effort down, right there. Ryan O'Reilly, first and ten. Knights. Looking down this roster, I mean, of the guys that we've called their names a lot tonight, only one of them is a senior. That's Jimmy Schmidt. That's right. What? Watch, watch Gabe go here. You know, Coach Barden was just – bubbling with how he he makes them go he yeah. extends plays he knows the awareness of the situation and right there he showed some toughness welsh lofts a pass and it's ah. intercepted by Jaden morales oh, yes, inside the five yard line for the irish morales. that's First and ten, a good interception happens. by morales but uh, yeah. a, a throw that i'm sure that welsh would like to have back well i can see coach pardon is meeting him right now yeah. well you know what and uh, I've not been a quarterback, but I taught a lot of kids about passing in a different yeah. sport. Is you got to make sure that you check the defender. Right. That is not a natural instinct for some people. You look at the offense. That's what happens. Yep. You threw it right to the defender. Uh, guys, and that seemed. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the pretty the same play they scored on the, the series before. And you know the guy was running wide open on that <laughs> last play, but um, they weren't in the same coverage. Fisher Catholic was so. Uh, you got a guy back there. You got to see him. Yep. So Irish ball, first and ten from their own three-yard line, and they left early. Somebody did. I think the other night I heard a call on this where the procedure was on everybody but the center. <laughs> I think that was almost <laughs> the case there. Here. <laughs> so we're going half the distance. So that'll back them up to the one and a half. Dead ball. I guess. False start. Offense, number four, it's half the distance, the goal line remains first down. So O'Reilly gets called for it. Hey, the Reds are back up, Shoe. Jonathan India hit a two-run homer. Good. It's 5-3 Reds. Yeah, don't keep me too updated. It <laughs> makes me too <laughs> flustered. Kiefer to pass over the middle. He's got Messerly, Ooh. but it's tipped. Nice job defensively, 52. Pass, by number 12, That's Sam Braden Workman. Stem. No, Braden, they said yeah, 12. Stem. Yeah, Messerly was open, but the pass was just not quite yeah. high enough to get over top of Stem. Well, it's a skill to look at the defender. I'm, I'm going to tell you, th th it's not natural. Yeah. It has to be taught somewhat what you can. And there are some players that just naturally see. You know, you hear players say, well, he sees the field. Right. He sees the court. There's something to that. Kiefer with three receivers to the left. Lops one out there. There's nobody there. That's incomplete. Double covered. Keeper's pass. Intended for number 10. Jake Morales, third long. So if you're the uh, Knights right here, you definitely want to try to get them a stop right here to make them punt from their the heels of the back line. Yeah, and I, they would I, have great field position. I'm a defensive coordinator. I want a second safety. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's how I'd play because yeah. that's rare. Yep. Kiefer to pass. He's got Owens with the catch across the 25, and he's it's going to be a foot race. Owens across midfield to the 40, to the 30. Owens goes out of bounds Kiefer's at the 20-yard line. Two, <laughs> great catch by Peyton Owens. Great throw, and too. And a great pass by Grant Kiefer. Hit him right in stride. I mean, watch this. From Jerry. out of his end zone. Yeah. Yeah, great pass and a great catch. It was. And then he used the official for a little screen there. <laughs> <laughs> so first and 10 Irish inside the 25-yard line. Kiefer surveys the field, has O'Reilly, overthrew him. Hyde could not bring it down, was able to get fingertips on it. Clock stops at 538 to play in the third quarter.
This Irish team is uh, well traveled in the first half of the season. They've been to Tuscawara Central Catholic up in New Philadelphia. They've been to Martins Ferry right along the river, right outside of Wheeling, West Virginia. Some long trips. Ethan O'Reilly on the carry. O'Reilly carries for maybe a yard. Third and nine. Brings up a third down and nine for Fisher Catholic. We saw the uh, Fisher Catholic slate with their schedule. I don't believe we got, did we get to the FCA? Not yet. We'll, we'll get that uh, here next stoppage. The Knights, as I mentioned earlier, this is their second league game. They opened up league play last week against Grove City Christian. And there's something you don't see. Oh, I thought it was, uh, thought it was Kiefer <laughs> leaving early, but it was the, uh, the right Dead guard. Ball. False start. Number 74, the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains third down. But this Knights team opened up league play with a, uh, an exciting win at Grove City Christian last week, a last-second field goal. And at Grove City Christian, they're off to a great start as well. Uh, this league was probably going to come down to one of these two teams. And uh, so Fisher Catholic, or Freefield Christian, rather, is one up on them right now. Pass over the middle, almost intercepted. It was intended for Peyton Owens. Incomplete, it'll bring up a fourth down. Keeper's pass broken up. Fourth down. Might as well go for it. I mean, yep. you have nothing to lose at this point. Punting is not going to gain you anything. See if they can, they have O'Reilly out here. See if he's at one on one. Kiefer. It's picked off and that's maybe gonna go for six. It's gonna be one man to beat and it's gonna be Kiefer. He's got a blocker and it's gonna be a pick Kiefer's six. Pass intercepted by number two. Great Rusty job, number Hutchinson two, Rusty Hutchison. We've called his name a lot tonight. Rusty's Just a, a heck, sophomore, he's, he's had, had a really a good game. How about his eyes right there, Marion? He just read that all the way. Yeah, he really did, guys. I mean, just an excellent break on the ball. And just, to, you know, to stab it at the high point, you know, he just did a fantastic job on that. Then again, show the speed to get down the sideline, run out, you know, everyone that was chasing him, just a really nice job on that play. Nine to 14. We are now in a running clock situation here in this second half. Extra point to come. It is up and it is good. Kick is good. So the, 14. the Knights lead at 50 to 14 with 3.42 to play in the third quarter. Here's the schedule for Fairfield Christian. Well, they play Martins Ferry's coming to Lancaster. So. Somebody you've seen before, and you know, but I, I really think, you know, they they're going to have a chance, Jared, to be eight and two, nine and one if they yep. play like they're capable. And Coach Pardon talked a lot about they want to land in a better spot. They won a game last year in the playoffs. They want to land in a better spot in the region. They're Division Seven, Region Twenty Seven, I believe it is. Yeah. They want to end up, and and all you got to do is win. I know that sounds ridiculously. Right. It's not that easy. Right no matter who you play. But, you know, they're going to have some favorable situations yep. with their players they have versus the opponents left on that schedule. Well, as I look at that schedule, I, I mean, they could realistically win win out. I mean, as I look at yeah, it. Yeah, they could. The teams they that could, I have seen. Like I said, they could I mean, beat I think Martins one. Ferry next week is yeah. going to be a tough game. Yeah. Uh, Miller might be a tough game. At last check, they were leading 16-6 to six at halftime at, uh, at, down at Burn Union. Mm -hmm. the, you know, they've got a lot of young talent. Uh a lot of they've got a huge roster uh just you know it's it's a resurgence uh, down in hemlock with, yeah. with athletics they're they're kind of on the uprise in male in um, the male sports so but fca i think has a good shot to uh to maybe run the table the rest of the way out on the return here is hyde o'reilly o'reilly gets some blocks and gets up across the 40 yard line good return here for fisher catholic hyde o'reilly on the return first and 10 fisher from the 44-yard line. Well, I know it's very cliche, but you really do try to prepare, you know, to, for the next game. No matter what, you got to put the other behind you. Yep. And, you know, tonight, 
you know, Coach Pardon obviously had them ready to go, and they, they've, they've executed and played well. Next dead ball, re, uh, get you some scores, some other games going on around the area tonight. Some interesting scores and some good matchups as Kiefer's on the rollout to the right. He's going to tuck it in and run. We've got a flag coming in. That's probably going to be a hold. Flags on the play. Holding and it is a hold on the Irish. The clock, for some reason, has stopped. It should be running. It's 30 points. There we go. Nope, nope, it stopped again. Officials are talking about it. Where the uh, where the block or the the hold happened? I didn't see an official stop the clock. Did I didn't you? either. Holding, offense number 68. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remains first down. Gahanna leads Pick Central 49 to 14. Mm. It is Circleville over Amanda Clear Creek. 14 to 3 in the fourth quarter. Uh, Logan Elm leads Fairfield Union 41 to 21. So Fairfield Union has cut the deficit there. They're starting to come back. Now Burn Union leads Miller 20 to 16 in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Burn has shut Miller out in the second half. Here's a screen pass over to Owens, and he's going to be dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. Second and long. Blue Carroll leads Liberty Union 35 to, actually they won that one 35 to 15 over Liberty Union. Hilliard Darby beats Lancaster 10 to nothing. Low scoring game up in Hilliard tonight. So some final scores coming in and we're still in the third quarter. <laughs> Lancaster might be pulling in as we're still, yeah, well. <laughs> still playing this one. Second down and long for Fisher Catholic. Second and 19 we'll call it. Kiefer looking long and overthrows his intended receiver. Look at Coach Luke Timmis. He bleeds green. I'll tell you that. He's was a player for Fisher Catholic. A Outstanding good player, one. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spent many, many years as an assistant coach. Finally got his opportunity as the head coach. Kiefer on third and long looking to pass. And almost intercepted. Thrown behind Simon Messerly. Bring up a fourth down as we're inside 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Irish will punt. So Owens drops back to punt. It'll be Rusty Hutchison. And I believe T.J. Blair back to field it. Rugby style punt. Peyton gets it away. End over end. Takes a Fisher Catholic bounce. Really good bounce. And will be down at the 18 yard line. And that's where FCA will take over on downs in the fourth quarter as we have reached the end of the third quarter here at Fulton Field. 46 yards. Take that every time. Yeah. So Peyton Owens uh, kind of took over the place kicking, the punting duties, uh, field goal kicking from JJ Vio, who was outstanding for three years for Fisher Catholic as a kicker, and he was a soccer player. And Peyton uh, played soccer as a kid, as a, uh, and you know when Coach Timbus was looking for a kicker, Peyton said, "I'll try it." He's had a really good a really good season so far. Sure has. Uh, I believe up to date he is. Uh, 13 of 14 on extra points. He also has a 33-yard field goal. So, um, you know, 
And, and Lancaster as well has a kicker that plays other positions, and that, that's tough to do. I mean, Mariana, I know that uh, you played multiple positions uh, in your career, but what <laughs> could you imagine playing both sides of the ball, offense and defense, and then having to kick and punt? He never comes out of the game. <laughs> I, I could not imagine it because I, <laughs> I certainly was not uh, blessed in that area of uh, football with, with uh, kicking and such. Uh, but we had a couple uh, players that did that, actually. You know, again, just being a small school uh, at Heath, um, again, if you've got an athlete that has the ability to kick, you know, a lot of times you want them on the field for yeah. the other other phases of the game as well. Um, so, again, it's just a, a, a testament, definitely a testament to Peyton and what he's been able to do this season and um, uh, his athletic ability. Here's a handoff to Chris Hutchison, who's in the game right now, and takes the carry. Like I said, Coach Parton really has not a lot of options of who to play. That's true. But he can also move some people around and get them ready for other positions. Yep. Second down and seven. Again, Hutchison on the carry, and he's going to be brought down, but I think flags are coming in, a face mask on the Irish. was a personal foul variety on the face mask. Yeah, it was good effort. Had great pressure. I I, I, I could not see the number from this point. But uh, just one of those things where you reach out and sometimes it, it's incidental, but still penalty. Personal foul, face mask, defense number eight. It's a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll result in a first down. So Messerly got the face mask. He got in the backfield. Yeah, he did. But just got that face mask. So first to ten for the Knights. Screen pass out to the right side is complete. It will go for no game. Trying to find the number for you. 18, Zach Price, I believe, on the reception. There you go. If we could show the game at this at this, yeah, right at this level, that angle. We, we'd be able we to read the numbers. numbers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Parker Couch out of the shotgun and passes through the hands of his intended receiver. Incomplete. Clock continues to roll as we are at the 30-point difference. 50 to 14. Fairfield Christian leads Fisher Catholic. So third and 10 coming up for the Knights. Knights have, I, I was going to say cleared the bench, but like you said, they don't have enough to clear their bench. <laughs> There's they not have, a bench. <laughs> they have some of their skill positions yeah, subbed out. Right. Fisher Catholic still with their starters in the game. On fourth down coming up here in six. O'Reilly will drop back to receive the punt. Tell you what, I don't know, is that, if it's Blair, he has hit some boomers tonight, especially in the first half. End over end kick. This might be returnable for O'Reilly. Slips, but gains control. And coming near side and down at about the 34 yard line. And that's where Fisher, Fisher Catholic will go back to work on offense. Watch here. Stumbled. Ooh, could have been a penalty there. Um, I think he let him go. I thought Fisher made a good job by not calling. And he just ooh, wow, threw him to the ground. Hit there on the ground, yeah. yeah. Heights a football player. Yes, he is. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Does not shy away from the contact. So 
So first and 10 Irish, 8-16 on a running fourth quarter clock. Keeper's pass complete to O'Reilly. O'Reilly gets wow. out of the tackle. He's going up the far sideline. He loses the ball, but out of bounds at about midfield. That was a long pass, <laughs> and he was. made a nice catch for yeah. about two yards, and then, you know, his yards after the catch. Yep. Kiefer again with Ethan O'Reilly to his right, looking to pass. Hits Owens. Owens going backwards. Now <laughs> gains some yardage, positive yards up near the 40-yard line. Just a few moments, we will get you the players of the game, one from each team. Kiefer over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Jaden Morales. Well, let's get to our players of the game. Let's do the uh, Fisher Catholic player of the game first. Fisher Catholic player of the game tonight brought to you by Bay Food Market. Stop in at Bay's and check out their weekly gourmet burger and brat selection and shop their full service fresh meat case. Bay Food Market at the corner of Walnut and Maple Streets in Lancaster since 1932. After this play, we'll turn it over to Shu. <laughs> As Ethan O'Reilly is gonna pick up the first down for Fisher Catholic. Shoe, I think for Fisher Catholic, it, it you know we have to look at defense and and a guy that was kind of all over the field tonight defensively for them. Hyde. Yeah, I agree. Hyde O'Reilly, number four defensively tonight. Yeah. I think played pretty well for the Irish. So he is our player of the game on the Fisher Catholic side. We'll get to the Fairfield Christian one after this play as Kiefer. Running for his life, keep almost gets a first down there. I think he, they will get a first down after this penalty. Well, the thing about Hyde is he's so active, and and you know, Jared, he's he's probably their hardest hitter. Yeah, and uh, he's done a great job catching the ball and some yep. tough catches on offense. But defensively, he's been all over. The right. Place, so. I mean, he'll go from one side of the yes. field to the other to make yes. a tackle. He has. He's he's used a lot of his pursuit and never gives up on a play. So congratulations, you see him right there, Hyde O'Reilly, number four, our Fisher Catholic player of the game. Let's get to our Fairfield Christian player of the game, brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Learn more at carriagecompany.com. And uh, shoot, this one, I don't know, there, there, there were several guys for Fairfield Christian that, that played well tonight. What do you think? Well, we talked about the three-headed monster, but I, I tell you, Rusty Hutchison had a great game. He runs back that. kicks. He made a great catch on a pass down here. He's involved in the kicking game. He's on the defense. Yep. I, I think he really stood out on the field. Now, Gabe, you know, Gabe Welsh is really good. Danny Blair is Danny yep. Blair. Right. You know, he gives what you expect. But I, I really think that Rusty had a great game tonight. I agree with that. As Hyde O'Reilly takes the reception and with the rest of uh, the work, he did it with his legs. How about timing for that after yeah. we gave him the player of the game? He runs it in for a touchdown on the screen pass. Well, he gives great effort. But again, congratulations, Rusty Hutchison, number two for Fairfield Christian. He is our player of the game for the FCA Knights. You see the Dagger Law replay right there. Really nice job with his legs. O'Reilly running it in for the touchdown after the catch. Good player. Good player. If Owens knocks this th through, we'll be at 29 deficit, and the clock will stop. Extra point is up, and it is good. So with 352 to play in the game, it is 50 to 21 FCA on top of Fisher Catholic. Irish not uh, not gonna just lay down. They're gonna try to give everything they can, get as many points as they can, and work on some things, and that's why they've left their starters in. Well, I mean, in all reality, you only get so many plays in a lifetime as a player. I mean, you, you know, you've been, you're in coaching. You play every play, every out, 
every second, whatever it is, to the max. And then you'll have no regrets. Staying warm here on a cool Friday night under the blanket. It's what you do when you have kids playing. <laughs> yeah. It is. I yeah. mean, it's just the way it is. I now have grandchildren playing. So my, uh, my commitment is still strong, but I am a little more of a fair weather fan than <laughs> ever. Of course, I have one that uh, is playing. So we've been to uh, many, many games over the <laughs> last uh, three, two and a half years. Lots uh, of travel. But I tell you, how about these officials? They've got a lot of travel tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they <laughs> they got a long trip home, most of them. Owens, low kick right up the middle will be taken at about the 25-yard line. What a move. Very nice move. And finally pushed out of bounds over on the far side. Rusty Hutchinson on the That's return. Rusty there. Again, Rusty Hutchison. I'm telling returning. you, he, he impacts the game in a lot of ways, Jared. So with 3.43 to play in the game and FCA up by 29, Coach Timbis will now put some new guys in the game on defense. Look at those signs all lit up over on the far side. Singing happy birthday to Zach, number 17, which I don't even see a 17 on the roster. Does that say 17? My eyes aren't, are, are going, they're going on me, Shu. <laughs> Run right up the middle for the Knights. That does say number 17. But Zach Price, as just, I'm assuming who that's for, he's number 18 on our roster. After that run, brings up a second down and seven, or six for Fairfield Christian. Stay tuned, coming up, uh, Marion will Try to get uh, Coach Pardon for some words after his team's victory and going to 2-0 and in league play in the Mid-State League Cardinal. Handoff coming right up the middle. Bring Stem on the carry. Stop going to be made right about midfield. Right stem on the carry. Ethan O'Reilly made the stop for three. Fisher Catholic. Brings up a third down and three for the Knights. Stem lines up to the left of Parker Couch, the quarterback. Couch. Keeps it himself, coming near side. Wide open over here, he gets a block. And will finally be brought down right about the 30 yard line. Couch on the carry. Brought down by number 10. Morales makes the tackle. Jay Morales, first and 10. So another first down for FCA. FCA. Clock rolls at two minutes to play in the ball game. Couch again with Stem to his left. Taking as much time as they can. And Couch loses it momentarily, picks it back up, and he's going to be wrapped up in the backfield by a whole host of Irish players. Leading the charge, number 13, Jacob Welsh. Inside of two minutes to play in the ball game. Second, and Second down and long here coming up for the Knights. It's a final in Circleville. The Tigers pick up their first win. They beat Amanda Clear Creek 14 to three. Logan Elm over Fairfield Union 48 to 21. 
Bloom Carroll over Liberty Union 35 to 15. Stem on the carry is hit immediately by Ethan O'Reilly and brought down in the backfield. Burn Union comes from behind to win 20 to 16. First win on their new field down in Sugar Grove. They beat Miller 20 to 16. And we told you earlier, Lancaster drops one 10 nothing to Hilliard Darby. And here at Fulton Field, under 25 seconds to play, the Knights are going to raise their record to 4-1 with a victory tonight and 2-0 in Mid-State League Cardinal play as they will beat Fisher Catholic 50-21 as time will run out on the Irish. And there it is. Clock down to zeros. The Knights win this one tonight with some big plays offensively and also some big plays defensively. And uh, was they kind of did it in all ways. Special teams, they had a kickoff for a touchdown. They they had some interception returns. They uh, The legs of Danny Blair, Hutchison, the throwing of well. I mean, it was just a, a, a full team effort. It was. And very consistent, I thought they were tonight. And, you know, they had the big plays, built the lead, and then really played very consistent all night. I mean, Coach Pardons is going to be happy with what he saw out yeah. there tonight. Marianne is going to uh, try to get uh, Coach Pardon for some words and there at midfield, and we'll see if he can talk to him real quick. I don't know if Coach wants to. I believe they might meet for a team prayer in the middle of the field, and then uh, he will head over and talk to Marion. But uh, while he does that, we can tell you that coming up next week, we will have another Mid-State League Cardinal uh, game as Burn Union uh, after they picked up their first win of the season tonight, they will head uh, up the road, up 37 to Millersport to take on uh, the Lakers. And we will have that one. Myself and Marion will be there uh, for that one. And Shu, uh, you've got a special Friday night next Friday, right? Yeah, New Lexington, they have their Hall of Fame ceremonies for past players, uh, all sports, uh, male, female, and four inducted next week, and I'll be there to be part of that celebration. Awesome. Awesome. We'll miss you, but I know that uh, that'll be a special uh, special time for you as well as all those folks uh, up at New Lexington. How, how's the season going for the Panthers? They were 2-2 two and two today. Um, had had some turnover things, but overall well coached. Um, they But they had to go to Tri-Valley to Dresden tonight, and that's never easy yeah, with yeah, Coach West right. down there. He's got, got a good team again. So, But uh, – I think they'll be fine. They've, they've got some games coming up that uh, I think that the field is level as far as when you look at it, but the reason you play is you get to sort all that out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for these two teams, we saw their schedules uh, and what's, what's upcoming for them. We've got uh, FCA. We'll have Martins Ferry uh, next week. Uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be a tough ball game. Uh, Martins Ferry traditionally very good. They've, they haven't been as good the last couple of years, but they've been back on their way up, upward, right. and that, that's, uh, that's a positive step for them. We had a chance to go over there uh, last Friday night, uh, for last Saturday night for a game, and, um, you know, beautiful facilities, a really cool facility, but uh, FCA going to have a chance to play them. That's going to be a tough one um, for the Fisher Catholic Irish. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, they've got some games in there that they can win. They just got to keep at it. Right, and, and I know speaking with Coach Pardon this week, too, they, they, they lost a game at Danville. They got, they got pushed around pretty good, but he liked it. He didn't like the loss or what happened, but he liked that they got to really find out where they stand. Yeah. Because they're, they're looking at not just winning the league. They're make some, they want to make some noise in the playoffs. And right. they got that taste last year at Bridgeport, and they lost to a, a river program, which we had seen before, who is pretty doggone good. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he was really excited about this team this year and where they can land. And you know, like you said, if you, if you if you fall in a higher place in the region, you're going to end up with more opportunities. I mean, yeah, you could get beat the first round, but if you're in the top three or four, not usually. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they're going clear to 16. Right. And like he said, back when it was 12, there were yeah. no gimme. That's true. You know, it's a good point. And right now, I believe FCA is right around that uh, four, four, yeah. five mark. And that's uh, what got, they want to do. Yeah, you've got Reedsville Eastern at number yes. one, Beaver Eastern at number two. Yep. Um, so they're, you know, they're they're right up there, right toward the top. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, as I said, we're halfway through the regular season at this point, so you kind of got to get a feel for it. But basically, what you got to do is you just got to take care of yourself. Yeah, you got to go out and win football games. 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, while we wait for Coach Parton. He's talking to his team. That's why we're uh, we're holding on here, waiting to get some comments from him with uh, Marion. But uh, you had a chance to see Lancaster last week. Right now they dropped to two and three after the tough loss up at Hilliard Darby. What are your thoughts on, on the rest of their season in their league? Well, Real quickly, because I see Coach Parton on his way over. Okay. I, I mean, I think they've got opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, I, I didn't obviously know tonight, but, you know, they didn't score any points. But defensively, obviously, played well again. Yeah. And if they can get the offense clicking and be more consistent, not turn the ball over, which right. was really uh, really inhabit, inhibited them early in the season, um, they've got a chance. Yeah. They, they play hard. They know their rules. And um, – but, you know, at the D1 level, every night you better go out and be ready to go, regardless of record. Well, we're going to send it down. Uh, I believe that uh, Coach Parton has made his way over to Marion Royster. Let's send it down uh, for some comments from victorious head coach Marcus Parton. Yeah, thanks, guys. So here with Coach Parton. Coach, you know, it was really just a tale of big plays early. It seemed like you guys hit some big ones early. Danny had some really nice runs, obviously. Uh, you know, and then Rusty, you know, had those big deep balls, you know, and then Gabe, of course, orchestrating everything. Talk about those splash, splash plays that you guys had. How important were those for you? Uh, they're very important. Uh, but, you know, you got, in order to get those plays, we got to be consistent and set up, you know, the, the short plays. Take the three, take the four, take the five-yard gain, and then get the big plays. We can't rely on them. And tonight we had to rely on them a little bit, and that's not good. I think, you know, at least for me, it seemed like the game was kind of blown open, you know, um, actually on special teams, even though you had so many big plays on offense. You know, the, the sequence there where you had, you know, the punt that was down at the one-yard line, were able to make that into a, a safety. Uh, and then, uh, um, you know, it had the, the very, very um, interesting where you uh, declined the penalty uh, when the ball went out of bounds. You were able to get the kickoff and run that back. So two back-to-back -back plays are huge plays on special teams. Talk about how important that was and then kind of what you were thinking when you you know, decline that uh, kickoff. Yeah, I think that was very important. I, it was a huge play. Um, and, and this game is three parts. Everybody looks at offense, defense. Special teams is just as important. When we tell our kids it's an offensive play for us. You know, after they you get that safety like that, the kids are down, all right, and uh, on their side. And we know that. They kick it out of bounds. We'll make them re-kick it and see if we can't get a big special teams play, and we were able to do it. So you're at the halfway point now, four and one. You know, you guys had a really nice start to the season. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, have a really, really great chance to have a special season and do some really special things. The remaining, uh, you know, four games that you have here, and then going into the uh, uh, the playoffs there. So, um, kind of, you know, talk about your thoughts about the remainder of the season and, and what your focus is uh, here from here on out. Hey, we got a, still got a tough road to go. Uh, we got Ferry next week. That's going to be tough. We still got Rosecrans, Burn. Uh, uh, Miller, who's playing well, um, and, and Miller's for We still got five tough games left to play. Um, but as long as we can be consistent with our mentality of two cent and our culture of work, we should be fine, be able to compete in some games and give ourselves a chance to win. Um, and we just take it one week at a time. You got to, this is old saying, you got to go one and no every week. That's it. So true. Great program you got here, Coach. Congratulations to you. Best of luck the rest of the season. Back to you guys. How about that, uh, Shu? That's a that's a true coach right there. Uh, you, you just won by 29 points, and you know finding things that he knows that his team needs to clean up. Well, that means you've been down the road. Yeah. Because um, and, and you're involved in coaching and things. Uh, it, it sports is one of the greatest humblers of life, <laughs> and it's life lessons are learned here. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, and and I like you know talking to Coach Parton this week. We're going to keep him humble. Yep. And um, we're going to learn how to work every day. You work for the next week, and, and then you let the chips fall where they are. Well, we know it was a long night. We thank you for tuning in and staying with us for the entire broadcast. If you're here, we want to uh, once again say thanks for uh, to our Interphase Video Productions crew uh, tonight. Josh Messerly, our producer director, also down with him, Shane Messina and Donnie Ziegfeld. Our cameras tonight, Jim Spires, Jason Rausch, and Tom Russo. Next week, we will be in Millersport to see Burn Union take on the Millersport Lakers. For Marion Royster and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Again, your final score tonight, FCA 50, Fisher Catholic 21. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, 
Fairfield County Adam H. The Savings Bank. Sheridan Funeral Home. Fairfield Federal. Fairfield DD. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home. Dagger Law. The Carriage Company. Personal Touch Party Rentals. North Body Shop. Fairfield Medical Center. And Buckeye Lake Marina. This has been an IVP Sports Production.